The following podcast is recommended for mature audiences only. The following podcast is recommended for adults only. Maturity is not a requirement. Hello and welcome to episode 55 of Dear Download, a podcast where we get to share our most intimate and treasured memories of Download Festival. We'll talk about each year, the bands we saw, the bands we missed, and everything else noteworthy that happened across the weekend. Also, we'll touch upon any news. (laughs) I'm sorry, Simon is mouthing along with me to this bit. I was trying to put you off for that whole intro just to make it, you know... Sorry. <laughs> well, that's fine. Um, it doesn't matter. I've been put off because we had a bit of a chat before and Simon has already said what we're doing this episode. 55, baby! Yeah, so films, games, TV, board games, loads of nerdy shit. Just, I don't know, just say something like that. This episode's about that. And general general rambling as well from wherever they take us. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. <laughs> and here, how are how, <laughs> I know, I, well, I don't know. <laughs> no, go, tell the people. Th- thank you, I Simon. never normally chime in this early. I'm always, like, prompted, no. so I wanted to cut in there. But go, sorry. Um, Adam, over to you. <laughs> well, how are you doing? Anyway, um, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't need to do that bit now anyway. Um, <sighs> so it's fine. We know they they know what it's about. They know what it's about. They, um, <laughs> you know. um, well, they don't because they probably I probably didn't record that bit. So we should probably tell them what it's about. I thought you were recording. I wasn't recording when I said that bit. <laughs> oh bollocks! Well, <laughs> well, this episode is. <laughs> oh, <I've lost. laughs> go go. This episode is uh, sort of a follow-on episode from the last one where we were supposed to talk about all these things like TV shows, films. Video games, computer games, all sorts of stuff, as well as uh, what we've done this month, uh, this month, what we've done this year, uh, how our summer has been, festivals and everything. And we never got round to talking about any of them because we rambled a bit too much. Yeah, we did. We so, went yes. in hard last time, and we, <laughs> yeah. we 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 had five or six subjects to talk about, and we only got through two in like an hour and forty five minutes. So that just shows you what we're like. Yeah, it? <laughs> and we did have Stu and Alexander. In the Discord today, saying, uh, I, "I love it how <laughs> I said we've got to go now," and then there was like twenty <laughs> minutes left of the episode, and Stu was like, "Yes, we've got to go." What do you think about modern art? <laughs> and that is why we didn't quite manage to talk about the things we wanted to talk about last episode. Yeah, we we went hardcore off. Did you um? Have, did you look at any art? No. Did you look at any more art? <laughs> have you thought about I any didn't... more modern art while we while we no. were doing that? No, I did look at the one you sent me, the one uh, that you said in the episode. Nice. Rooms by the Sea by Edward yeah, Hopper. Yeah, Rooms by the Sea. Very nice. Yeah, very um, nice. Very nice. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And, well, you know, yeah. I know you were like, oh, you're going to make me like art. But I think that... <laughs> um, superpower. <laughs> I, think that, I think that there is like, yeah, there will be one day a piece of artwork or, you know, a sculptor or a paint. Someone you'll look at and you'll go, do you know what? I get this. It's going to happen to you one day, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and of all the things we've talked about in the last episode and recently, and we could carry on, Saliva's new album came out and I listened to it and it's awesome. Ooh, but good. no, but no, we lead with modern art again. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but tell me, tell me more about, um, tell me more about the Saliva album. So it's good because I was worried. I was like, I could tell he's looking forward to this. And I was like, I haven't had a chance to listen to it, but I was like, I hope he likes it. So I'm glad that you actually liked it. So it's good quality. Yeah, yeah, really good. Wicked. I've listened to the, as I normally do, I've listened to the first few tracks a bit more than the sort of later tracks because I don't always have time to listen to the whole album. But the first one starts off quite heavy. And, you know, I could be wrong. I feel like I'm not wrong. But I, the, the singer, Bobby, Bobby Amuru, I think this is the first time I heard him screaming. Oh. I I could be wrong, but because I haven't gone back and checked, and I'm like, I don't think I've heard him scream before. Nice, awesome, and that's I, cool. It's so really different. cool. Um, yeah, 
he, he might do it loads. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, well, I, I do know. I I just haven't checked. Yeah. Because I haven't checked. I've got that slight doubt in my mind. Uh, but yeah, that was the first first song was really cool. It was quite heavy for saliva. Uh, the second track, probably about halfway through, it's a really nice, beautiful guitar solo, and that hit me, and uh, and it made me think like this was written by Wayne, you know, uh, Wayne Wayne Swinney who who died while they were on yeah. tour. So did he record? Did he record these tracks? Are they, or are these his guitars that yes. someone else played? So these are actually his guitars. Yeah, the awesome. Um, the the album was pretty much it was being recorded for a little while now i believe um, nice again i could be wrong on that i think they were it was so i think they, they posted something out a little while ago with uh and basically saying like yeah it's all recorded gonna go on the road for a little bit while it gets uh sort of mastered or whatever so nice. uh yeah to hear to hear it and uh, but that the guitar solo is such a nice beautiful guitar solo and, and it's so typical of saliva and of, of wayne and I don't think I've appreciated his his like guitar guitar work and solos enough until this point. It, you know, I, I I suppose it's the same with a lot of things. When when somebody's gone, you know, they're appreciated more after they've gone. Oh, and, and yeah, definitely. It, it is for me. Oh, well, it's, I, it's for me. From that, Sorry. another Wayne that passed away that's just released a new song. Static X have released a new track. Uh, Obviously, with yeah. Wayne Static's <laughs> vocals on. Um, yeah, called oh, really? Stay. Yeah, called Stay Alive. Well, they released that Regeneration Volume One, which was obviously all of his own, his old stuff that they put music over. The original band from Wisconsin Death Trip, and this is Regeneration right. Part Two, um, and the new single right. from it's absolutely incredible. Like, it's amazing that all of these unused Wayne Static vocals are like fucking amazing like that the yeah. last album genuinely has some of the best static x songs in it that they've ever done and to to use really? his vocals to craft the songs around them and like use bits of guitar bits that he came up with and sort of rebuild the songs around them is so interesting and how amazing they turned out and obviously having the original band helps but yeah the new static x tunes wicked so it, it's it just proves that you can still mold songs and you know the way that we they write music now on computers and everything like that we can if someone's passed away and you still have stuff of theirs you know you can still mold it into something awesome which is great that you enjoyed his guitar solos because it's cool that they still have them there and they can put so, you know yeah. songs and vocals around it if they weren't already recorded before he died so it's cool that we can uh, like you said appreciate people even after they're gone they can still release stuff that's mm, wicked yeah so yeah, yeah. Awesome. I, mean, I mean, we saw that with uh, Lincoln Park last year, didn't we? Oh so, yeah, I think it was five tracks. Yeah, um, which you know, twenty. Well, no, I was going to say twenty years, but it's not been that many years since um, Chester passed. But yeah, the Grey Days album it, as well, with all that whole album with all of his old old vocals on, is absolutely unbelievable as well. I have not heard that. So Grey Days not were his band before either. Lincoln Park. And he right. was doing stuff with them again before he died. Um, well, he'd oh, recorded really? stuff throughout the years with them over stuff. like They used some like, unused stuff, but some recent stuff that he had recorded, they were going to do a tour as Grey Days, um, but then he passed away. Um, so that was all in mind. But yeah, that album has some absolutely stellar songs on it. I think Sometimes is just as good as any Linkin Park song. Um, and it was obviously like, built around his vocals and they had a structure but they sort of made the song around that so again you, yeah you can really you know build songs around people that have passed away if they've still got their vocals so it's actually crazy yeah yeah uh well another thing on a similar similar line to that ai is doing pretty well at the moment with building songs and creating yeah brand new songs which is uh worrying yeah. for a lot of people i think um it doesn't worry me, but I'm not overly mm. hyped about it either, if that makes sense. you know. It, it still takes a lot of human intervention to get these things up and running. Like, okay. the, the, I, the AI doesn't write the song, produce the song, put the song in the right order, EQ the song, master the song, and release the song. <laughs> you still need yeah. humans for all of that, but you can generate, generate the AI parts of the song but you still need to craft it and make it yeah. what it is from a human perspective. So, okay. yeah, you can create the sounds, but actually putting it into a song still takes, you know, some form of human interaction. 
right. to make it sound good. I didn't, didn't know any of that. I've listened yeah, to I, those I, endless loops of, um, you know, uh, gen AI song, and they're not songs; they're just riffs. Like, Nyan cat. Yeah, they're, badger, they're not. They're not songs. Badger, they're badger. just riffs. So you'll think, oh, that bit sounds right. really good, but then the oh, next like, two. Oh, um, like Epic Sax Guy. No. Uh, What's that? I'm just, I'm just throwing out. Okay, sorry. Just throwing out random old internet memes. Oh, that I must add. I, What's random sax guy? E- epic sax guy. Oh, epic oh, sax my, guy. My, you should check out his ten-hour version. <laughs> his, his oh, okay. I, I I had it as my ringtone for the longest time. <laughs> um, okay, I'll check it out. <laughs> but I mean, it's similar to I'm sure you know Badger, 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 Badger. Yeah. I I showed my my kids that the other day. <laughs> it was quite funny, and uh, Nian Cat. So it's it's, a, it's some along those like kind of lines where it just goes on the same loop forever. Sorry, well, the AI I, ones is like yeah, it's a loop, but it's a loop of a, an AI. You know, someone's put every drum hit in, someone's put all the notes of a guitar in, progr- showed the AI what gent songs are like, and then gone to the right, AI okay. right. I'm going to press play, and now you're going to write your own songs. So a lot of it it gets okay. right. So you listen to it and you're like, oh. Yes, the drums are perfect, bass is good, riff is good, and then some other bits are like not quite as good, a little bit off. But it's all just riffs after riffs after riffs. It's not he hasn't written a song where it goes like intro, you know, verse, chorus, pre-chorus, chorus, post-chorus, verse, you know, it hasn't put it all into an actual form of a song. It's mainly just loads and of different like gent riffs. But still really cool to experiment with. Yeah. Like awesome. Yeah, and well, I was gonna say, um, Stu posted a, a, a post a posted a, a link to Insta- Instagram on the on the Discord the other day, and it was a, an AI created song about uh, SpongeBob, but it was really good, <laughs> really really good. Yeah, I showed it to some people in work, and they were like, "No, I hate it because it was AI." <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was like, no, you had enough of this. Um, yeah, people yeah, need to be a little less scared of AI. I mean, it's doing a lot of cool things, but it's not quite there yet. It's not quite to the Skynet taking over. Humans are mm. irrelevant. Point an AI can't take a bin out, <laughs> so yeah, you know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, they, cool. They, I, yeah, I probably I just want to backtrack a little bit because I, I did say I don't really care about AI, but you know, I do understand from some people's point of view, you know, art, artists or or something that it, it is a threat. It's a big threat to the actors at the moment because uh, yeah, definitely one of the reasons yeah, for the strike. So, yeah, yeah. So I understand it's just something I haven't looked into enough to have formed an opinion on. So I haven't formed either a good or bad opinion on it, to be honest. Well, I think that the I'm in the actors because I think even though the the technology isn't there for it to completely take over, I think it's good to get the legislation in place as to what actually happens with it. So I think that getting that done early will be good because if we sort the legislation, what you can and can't do with AI when it comes to actors... I think that's good to do that now. And then yeah. we can look at it once the technology is there to completely replace someone that's died in a film to have their voice, likeness and all that shit. Um, but yeah, it's not quite there yet. But the, to get the legislation in place for what are the rights of use, I think is a yeah. perfectly you know, agreeable thing that we should be doing. So yeah, I totally agree with them when it comes to that. Yeah, and me, me too. And um, I, I think it's going to be interesting where it goes. Um yeah. Because I think I heard, like, like you said, it's, it's part of the reasons for the strikes, and 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 they they wanted to pay them like one day's work, a full day's pay, which isn't very much, to be able to use their likeness forever. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> that, 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 no, that doesn't work. Said, That'll put me out of a job. Mm. Um, and I don't know if you've seen. So, we, so we, we've already talked about we're talking about actors and films and TVs already. So we this is quite good. Quite good segue. Good, good segue, segue, man. Look at that. Natural yeah. segue. Didn't even think about yeah. it. <laughs> Although it's not that natural because I stopped to pat myself on the back. Or pat us <laughs> both on the back and then I fucked it up. Um, yeah, Black Mirror. Have you seen, uh, have you watched any of the Black Mirrors or uh, the latest season at least? I've only, no, I've only watched the first like four episodes of Black Mirror. Again, another show that is on my list to catch up on. Um, and the episodes yeah. I watched were you know, really, really well done. I loved it. I, I loved the ideas. I thought the editing direction, the acting, everything was brilliant. But um, yeah, so we have one I need to catch up on because everyone keeps saying every season has like a couple of episodes in it that are just like, oh, this is amazing. So yeah. yeah. 
I, th- I think I've seen all of them, but yeah, the first episode of the latest season. I can't remember what number it is. Maybe season six. But yeah, the, the latest one is basically is basically that. Like by signing up to Netflix, she gives her sort of rights away to Netflix to make whatever they want from uh-huh, from yeah. her life. And and I think the the show is called something like Boring, whatever her name is. I can't remember her name. Jasmine, I think. Boring Jasmine, let's say. Um, and she's watching it, and everything that she does, they have made make a film out of. And then she ends up like, uh, I don't know, it's quite cheating, but like she has a go at her husband or something, or she does something, and her husband finds out from the show. And uh, but yeah, it's oh, um, it's, okay. it's a crazy episode, really, really good. That's cool. I saw, really good. I idea. saw I saw that before I heard about what they wanted to do in Hollywood with paying the actors to use their likeness. Get you. So you were like, oh shit, we're already doing things about this yeah, whole thing. Yeah, w- w- whether they had heard um, heard that already, maybe that was already old news when when I heard it, or you know they sort of got an inside word uh, about what they wanted to do, and so they made something about it. <laughs> well, people beforehand. have been talking about it for the last couple of years. Have they? So, yeah. Oh, I'm, I am well behind then. Yeah, people have been talking about it for, for a little while, about what they were going to do with it and how... Yeah, good. The technology is blah 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 blah. Well, uh, do you, do you want to start with talking about TV shows then? Uh, sure. Uh, we're already on it. Or... Yeah, we'll just run. I will just run through some stuff that I have been watching. So we're still going through CSI New York at the moment. We're on <laughs> series three of CSI New York, which is really fun because I'd never watched CSI before, and Vicky loved it. And um, yeah. she said that uh, the original CSI is her favourite, uh, but New York was really good as well. And I went into a charity shop and they had like the first five seasons of CSI New York for like a pound each per season. So I just right. grabbed them all and she was really excited. So I took them back. And uh, yeah, then we just started watching them randomly. But the good thing about CSI is is because it, uh, I think CSI News New York started in like 2005. So some of it is quite dated to 2005 right, with like okay. the music and the costumes and the situations and stuff but it's great because it's like a little time capsule so when you're watching it you're like oh shit yeah i remember that <laughs> i remember when people dressed like that like we're into like 2007 uh, eight territory now when we got to season three um but it's just interesting to see it and csi because i never watched it before i didn't know any of this you know, every episode is essentially the same. They discover a murder or a homicide or something. They have to figure out what happened and who to pick. So, so every yeah. episode is essentially the same thing, but they try different cool ways to try and throw you red herrings for who it isn't. So some of them you guess straight away. Other ones you're like, oh, that was surprising. They've done that really well. But I think the weirdest thing about the show is like they use like the most random music cues, right. music <laughs> and editing I've ever seen on a show. Because I think that every season it's like doctor who you'll have um someone who produces it but you'll have a different director every like couple of episodes or every episode so every episode has its own feel which is why with doctor who you have some episodes that are fantastically written and fantastically directed and others not so much so the quality is like vast you could have one episode where you're like that's literally one of the best doctor who episodes i've ever seen and the next episode could just be a boring horrible drab mess um which is one of the best things about being a doctor who fan it's very rare you get a full Doctor Who season where every single episode is like, that was all incredible. So it's quite yeah. rare. But I've, it's kind of like this. So like music cues, for instance, like someone just would have died in the last scene and then someone will make a like a like a really terrible joke. Like, um, you know, someone will be crushed and then someone will say, wow, that was a crushing blow. And you'll be like, <laughs> oh, God. And then it will go. And then it will show loads of people like uh, doing loads of like scientific TV bollocks to try and prove like who got it. And then the next, (laughs) and then like totally out of context, the next one will be like a really somber, serious music with a really like serious tone. And then the next scene will be something completely different. So when you're watching it, it's like going on a massive trip of watching a show where you're like, there is so many different nuances in every episode it's like mind-boggling how they even edited them together like yeah. and some of the epi- some of the editing will be like we just had this conversation and it'll cut straight away or it'll go for like a skitty cityscape and then cut 
or there'll be like a slow fade and then a fade. It's like it's just like they pressed random, like I want <laughs> random music and I want random cuts throughout this entire yeah. <laughs> show. And it's really jarring because sometimes it's really terrible, but it's really <laughs> enjoyable as well. Because yeah. you're like, that was terrible, but I loved every second of it. <laughs> and then some stuff you're like, that was really, really good. So yeah, I'm having a great time watching CSI for the first time. Like really, really good. It's really cool. I'm I'm actually having a blast. So yeah, so that we've been watching a lot of that. Um. Yeah. Do you want to do awesome. one? And then yeah. Come back to no. Me? Well. Yeah. No. On on that. I I have seen some of the CSI ones. I think Miami was my favorite, which had um uh, the guy with the glasses. Who'd always oh Horatio. Horatio. Yeah. yeah that's the yeah, one. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. I know. I <laughs> did know you see? Mean. Did you see John's impression of him at the stag? No. Oh, Maybe. we were standing there. Basically, he's got a Stargate tattoo. We'll talk about Stargate in a second. Okay. He's got a Stargate tattoo. So we started talking about Stargate and all this sort of stuff. And I told him that we were watching CSI. And um, he was doing the best Horatio impression <laughs> I've ever seen. I was cracking up. I was like, I have to film this for Vicky. Um, but I didn't get around to doing it. But I was just wondering if you've seen him do his Horatio impression. I don't it's, think I did. It's amazing. It was yeah. good. Um, but yeah, it's a similar, similar thing with um, Supernatural where it's, I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's just I basically... have seen the first three or four seasons, and then I dropped off. Yeah, yeah it's basically a monster of the week, where CSI yeah. is like a killing of the week. But they had a <laughs> they they had a a little skit. I think it was an episode where it was like a, maybe a crossover or something like that, and and they get to a murder scene, and one of them sort of they they, they find this roll of coins down the guy's throat, and they, and and, they, and he takes a glass off and say and says, "Well, I say jackpot." <laughs> <laughs> and then they keep doing it just taking the piss I mean, it's really good amazing but yes i had never noticed that before that you said about i mean i, I have seen where it, do, it does cut to the sort of skyline or whatever but they I've do never that thought a lot. about it yeah. yeah never thought about it in as much detail as you just talked about it um I pro- probably i just would just switch off when we're watching them and it's just easy watching you know, not yeah, paying yeah. attention to the music scene or the music cues and what kind of music it is. Um, well, it's but like yeah, you can tell cool. some of it is like some of the music they've paid for and some of the music they definitely have got just like gone to a copyright web, non-copyright website and like downloaded <laughs> all of these random stuff. Yeah. Like I was just like, I was like, literally me, I could come up with better music. for If they said, Simon, we need... <laughs> We need 50 tracks for this season of, of CSI New York. I'd be like, I can guarantee you right now, I can come up with much better stuff than you've currently got in the show. <laughs> like, some of it is really, really bad and completely out of place within the scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to pick up another thing you said about, about the fashion and, and, and how dated it is. Mm. Uh, not about CSI, but um, something I've noticed recently, which Kelly was very excited about when I told her. Uh, cords have come back into fashion. I don't know if you remember them. Love I've seen some cords. I've, I've seen some girls wearing cords recently, and I'm like, I thought Kelly would love that, and she did. She was like so excited that she might see some in the shop. I've got some cord shirts that I still wear. I didn't know men wore cords back in the day. I thought it was just all women wearing the cord trousers, and that was it. No, no, no. Yeah, because cords were... are like a they're like a seventies thing, aren't they? Like cords, trousers, and stuff. I had no idea. I didn't oh, I get you. Yeah, <laughs> so I got like some. I got some cord shirts. It's subtle, but it is a cord shirt. They look really nice. Like a faded grey cord shirt looks 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 dope, man. Yeah, wear it open with a band t shirt. Your your long yeah. sleeve. Criminal That's da- what I'll be wearing a lot this winter. Criminal damage trousers. Oh, massive at the bottom. Mm. Now you're talking DCs. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're, right. oh, you're on, we're on board. Oh, uh, what is it? Oh, I can't remember what they're called. I've been talking, thinking about buying these trainers. Oh, they're gone. I can't think of it. Never mind. Uh, why am I talking while I'm pouring a drink? I'm a twat. Something 03. DC 03? Something like that? I don't oh, know. It's, nice. It's gone. It's gone. But um, Vicky actually mentioned quickly. Sorry, that just reminded me. Vicky mentioned that Vans have released um, uh, like a new old version of their Vans. So, that, so Vans, modern Vans are quite skinny. But back yeah. in the day, Vans would do the sort of puffier... Um, skate shoe versions of them and uh, yeah. I can't remember what they're called but they've just released some that Vicky is going absolutely crazy about so if yeah. you're into like fat skater vans they've just released a new series of them that look really really nice fat skate shoe vans nice. they look yeah. sick I have to look at them 
But yeah. I think I've owned one pair of Vans before, and they fell apart really quickly. Mm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think it was Vans anyway. Um, anyway. I've only ever had the Vans. Do you remember like the Van slip-ons? No. Well, I remember okay, them. So like, I never had them. I never had yeah, like the classic other than the checkered. Vans. The classic 2004 checkered van slip-ons. I've I had those back in the day, but yeah. I haven't worn a pair of vans in a long time. Nice. Yeah, I've got a pair of Etnies at the moment. My first ever pair of Etnies. Oh, nice. But yeah, they're big and puffy. Skate nice shoes. I won't wear anything else now. I'll be an old man, eighty-year-old man wearing skate shoes. <laughs> nice. But yes, uh, CSI was good. I never watched a full season. I don't think I've watched like little bits here and there. Uh, they are good. I I always enjoy watching them. Yeah, but I haven't watched them for a long time. I forgot. Are they even still going? I don't know. Yeah, they're still. Yeah. Um, they've gone back to. It's called CSI Las Vegas. Is the newest one okay. with some of the cast from the original CSI coming back with right. some new people because Vicky's been watching that um, just to see what it's like, and she said it's still really good, but just like modernized. So you know they've all got smartphones and. They use AI to solve stuff and, you know, all the new programs. So it's just like yeah. an updated version of CSI. But she said it's still good, still interesting. Awesome. So uh, cool. well, we've just started watching um, Leverage. Uh, I think it's called Leverage Redemption. What is, what's that? So uh, it's an older show I watched probably about 10, 12 years ago. And then I had a break and they've done two new seasons. And it's basically a group of people who are con artists or thieves. But they've all been screwed over in one way or another. Uh, so they become the good guys, and they they start sort of conning bad guys, really, I guess, and, oh, and nice. stealing from them, yeah, nice. and sa- saving people from bad guys. Awesome. Was it? I was say similar to sort of hustle. Was it hustle? No, I've not seen that. Hustle. Yeah. I'd heard hustle was good. Yeah, I remember well, seeing well, clips well, of that back in the day, and people thought hustle was really good. Yeah, but I don't. I no, do not. I did. I never never watched that. But I don't know. I don't know why I brought that up. I was thinking the real hustle, but it's not real. That was more of a reality thing, wasn't it? But yeah, so yeah, Leverage is really good. I Like I said, I watched it ages ago. It's quite cheesy, I think, um, but I really enjoyed it. They did like, they did like five seasons and then took nice. a break and they've done two more. So it was really good. Wicked. Uh, so they, 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 one of the ones we watched last night, it was like an esports team. A guy is running this esports team, but he's basically keeping them hostage and he's feeding oh. them all these drugs and stimulants and stuff. And they can't get out. They think they're going to be the next big thing. They're the biggest stars in the world. So they're not trying to escape, but their parents are worried. So they have to go in and infiltrate and pretend to be his friend and uh, give him like this cheat code thing. Well, not cheat code, like a, a USB stick with a cheat on it so he can make them win. Um, ah. But there's, there's always twists. It's really, really good. I recommend it to every, anyone. Nice. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to have watched the original stuff. But they do reference it, or they do reference the guy who used to, was like the main guy quite a bit, a guy called Nate. Uh, but you don't need to have watched it. You just know that they talk about him a lot. <laughs> nice. So you can just What's catch up. What's that on? With... Who, who made that? What is that? BBC, um, ITV, American? It's American, yeah. Uh, I actually do not, I don't know. But I think it's got a guy from Buffy in it. Um, and it, I, Kelly knew who he was, so you will probably know. Um, I'm going to find it on IMDb because I don't know what his name is. Leverage Redemption. Uh, it's got it's got Christian Kane in it from Buffy. I don't know if you remember who that is. I think it was on Buffy or Angel. Do you know? Does that help? Oh, oh, come on, focus. Oh yeah, he was he was Lindsay. He was Lindsay in Angel. Was he? Okay. Yeah, really good character. Really has one of the best character arcs in the entire show. Okay, of Buffy nice. And Angel. I well, it. Angel. Yeah, really good. Awesome. Um, any other TV shows you want to talk about? I've got uh, a massive yeah. list. I've got a list of about 15. Oh, okay. I've only got three on here. Um, so I, I won't talk about what we've been watching most recently. I'll do that last. Um, but I went back again to watch one of my favorite sci-fi series of all time, which is... So Stargate, I never got on that much with Stargate um, SG-1. I know everyone goes on about it being such a great show. <clears throat> I don't like Star Trek. I've watched a few episodes here and there. Um, but I, ne- I haven't given it like time. And then obviously you had Stargate Atlantis and a couple of others. But one that I started watching, which was more space based, was Stargate Universe hmm. with um, Robert Carlyle as the lead, oh, which is it? like a that. fantastic actor that you could get. But everyone on the show is great. Um, but yeah, I watched it when it came out in like 2009 
and it, it, and it ran for two seasons. But I always go back to it to watch it because I think, oh God, I love that series so much. It was so awesome. So it's a bit like of a different Stargate. Basically, these guys are experimenting. It's got a cool little thing, actually. These guys are experimenting on this Stargate because they exist in the world. And um, they need the codes to break the last chevron to get through it. So they embed puzzles in a video game. Yeah. And this guy, <laughs> Eli, solves the video game. He's the first person in the world to solve the game and win it. So then the army turn up at his house and say, uh, yeah, can you come with us? We need you to sign this documentation. You know, what you solved was a very complex alien puzzle. Um, yeah. And Robert Carlyle was the scientist guy that sort of put input all, inputted all that into the game. So then he goes and basically what happens is this Stargate goes to a ship and this ship is just randomly flying around the universe keeps them going to light speed and just going everywhere but the thing is the part place that they're at with the stargate gets attacked so that everyone gets stuck on this spaceship somewhere in the universe which is why right. it's called stargate universe and they basically have to stay on this ship and figure a way to use stargates all across the universe to get back home it's fucking awesome that does sound awesome yeah it's that- so good like so good it's such a great show so obviously this ship is just like stops places and whenever it stops it's got like a timer that says an hour three hours so they only have three hours to to chime into the nearest stargate go to that planet get the resources or whatever they can and get back within three hours so that obviously causes a lot of hijinks people getting stuck on planets and all that sort of stuff um but yeah they're basically trying to figure out a way home and they slowly learn to use more and more of the ship as the series goes on um, they find always exploring it and finding new bits because the ship is giant. It's yeah, really good. If you're a sci-fi fan and you haven't seen Stargate Universe, check it out, man. When I, I was watching it the other day, sitting there, just going, "Oh man, I forgot how good the show is." Yeah. It's just great. And obviously, when you get a great actor like Robert Carlyle as pretty much the lead of the show, it's like perfect. So yeah, other Stargate shows I never really got on with, but Stargate Universe, man, what a fantastic show it is. So yeah. Awesome. That's, I've been I'm watching just, a lot of that recently. Just talking about Stargate with Kelly last night, actually. We um, oh, really? we, we, we were looking at what to watch because we forgot we started watching Leverage. <laughs> we, we were looking at new things and, and after about 10 minutes, I was like, hang on, didn't we start watching Leverage? Let's go back to that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we looked at... So obviously I'd heard of Stargate and it, it, we were hovering over Stargate, Stargate Atlantis. And I was like, do you know, I've never thought about that before. I never thought about... Like, I just thought I've only ever seen the film. Um, right, so, I so I assumed Stargate. <clears throat> Film's pretty decent. Yeah, and I was like, so all, all I know of Stargate is in sand, like in, in the sand, like in, 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 in yeah, Egypt yeah. or wherever it is with, with pyramids. I know. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's a real place. Uh, but anyway, and I was like, so did they actually go to Atlantis in that season? And she's like, yeah. And I, <laughs> I thought, I didn't know that. That's cool. And then she started talking about Stargate Universe, and it, it was, was it cancelled after two seasons? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. I still might give it. So a they watch, do, though. they do write in an ending because they knew it was going to be okay. Um, yeah, which is really unfortunate because it was wow, what a show! Yeah, awesome. So, um, yeah, worth, we, worth we, a watch if you ever want to delve into the Stargate I <laughs> universe. I yeah, <laughs> I think I do now. Um, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the film, but uh, ne- never bothered watching any of the others. Uh, yeah. But I know Kelly's seen them all. I don't. I'm sure she said which was her favourite, but I'm not sure. I can't remember now. Uh, but I'm sure she'll be happy to watch it again. Yeah, awesome. She, she said that yeah. about a few few things she's watched <laughs> that I haven't seen, and she's like, "Yeah, we should watch it. It's really good. I'll watch it again." Whereas I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm not that bothered um, about watching stuff again. Oh, I've got a huge list for Vicky. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, huge, huge list of stuff that we've got to watch. Yeah, well, I, I think. Well, I said I said earlier before we started recording, but we we have watched absolutely loads the last probably two three years um just because once the kids are in bed we've got no energy to do anything so we <laughs> we just want to sit down and watch something rather than you know, play fair, board yeah. games or anything like that so uh yeah we, we end up watching a lot of stuff i like that we have some of our best nights like that like when, when we get to movies like every friday night if we're not doing anything is we will make food and we will watch two films yeah nice so, you know, Vicky went from probably watching, you know, she wasn't like a film watcher. She'd seen movies, obviously. But, you know, we've since we've been together the last five years, I mean, she could probably used to have a chart which had all the films on 
that we watched where she would give them scores and okay. to go back to doing that. But obviously she hadn't seen any of the classics, you know, any of the, you know, sci-fis. She hadn't seen Terminator, Roebuck, you know, all this stuff that I love. So yeah. I've been blessed with showing her all of these amazing stuff. And then when we watch stuff together that we both haven't seen, that's really cool as well. So I've been blessed to watch stuff. But I was going to say, those are some of my favorite nights, man. Just staying in. Yeah. Nice, all cozy up. That's why we're coming to winter. It's going to be perfect. Cozied up. Yeah. Bottle of wine, couple of glasses of wine, and watching some films. There is literally nothing better. No. Yeah, I agree. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, I want to talk. So one one of the reasons why I was excited about doing TV shows as well is because we've had so many recommended in the Discord. So oh, many people yeah. have been talking about a lot of TV shows, and, and you know, and you run out of stuff to watch. And you just ask in the Discord what people are watching, and yeah, just I there's there's a few on my list that I've got from Discord. The one we finished watching between the last episode and now, so if we actually got to this last episode, I wouldn't have been able to talk about Leverage because we were still watching Twisted Metal. Oh yeah, and that was absolutely amazing, man. Like that was, was it? It looked good. Yeah, it, that was um like I said, it was uh, recommended by someone in the Discord. And I was like, Twisted Metal, is that, I'd never heard of it. And I was like, is, is that from the game? And he was like, yeah, they said yes. <laughs> so we, we watched it, but it was really well done. Like re- a good cast. It looked good. You know, when you think, because Twisted Metal wasn't the biggest PlayStation 1 game. For, oh, yeah, so no. for anybody who doesn't know, yeah, Twisted Metal was originally a PlayStation 1 game. Good game though. It was good. Yeah, I, I played it and completed it. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those that most people did play and it's just not. I, I I'm uh, I'm just thinking that it wasn't as big as it actually was, but uh, yeah, you would think maybe kind of I don't know. Is there an, is there a name for shows that are kind of like B movies, B shows, B TV shows? I don't know, but that's kind of what I was thinking. Um, yeah, but that, I mean, low budget, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's that. not like it probably hasn't got the budget that other shows have got, like Stranger Things or something like that we were talking about before. But um, but, but yeah, it's it's good it, when those those medium sized shows actually turn out to be yeah really well, really really good it looked like it probably did have quite a big budget but that was my presumption before watching it before even seeing any trailers i was like it might be quite low budget but it was really good and um i don't really want to spoil it but sweet tooth in it is absolutely amazing nice yeah and i i, I afterwards i sat down and watched so i i always like watching youtube videos of like easter eggs that are in it if, if they're from games or tv shows and there weren't very many in Twist, Twisted Metal, but um, there were a few like mm. that make it true to the games, like Twisted Metal, uh, not Twisted Metal, like uh, Sweet Tooth. In one of the games, he's only got one eye, so in one of the episodes, he gets shot in the eye, and so it sort <laughs> of um, nice builds it up for uh, the next season, to so he's actually yeah. like that character. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, really, really good. I can't. I don't know how much detail to go into about the story, but. Yeah, probably probably none. If you like Twisted Metal, the game, or if you like good TV shows. I mean, it was a bit cheesy in some places, a bit far-fetched, but it was really good. A really good story and a really good sort of adaption of a game, I guess. Is, yeah, it's the best way yeah, to say. Yeah, not a lot of, um, g- you know, games r- are really, really difficult to translate to movies or TV shows. Yeah. And people find it really hard because... The people that play the games are so into the game or know so much about the game. There's so much expectation on these that it's difficult. It's like all the anime ones they've been doing recently. It's difficult to try and mold something so different into you know something for a wider audience. So they do yeah. find it difficult. So it's actually a bonus when stuff even turns out half decent. But if Full Metal, like, if um, Twisted Metal was really good, then that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was they've done really their good. job much, much better than I was expecting. Nice. So I uh, definitely recommend watching that's on, it. Uh, that's on Netflix, right? I don't know. Or, uh, Netflix don't, or Amazon. We don't, it was one of the two, wasn't it? We don't use legal <laughs> TV shows anymore because they cost too much. We cancel our Netflix. Oh, that's right. You um, you support criminal activity. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I say this to my mum all the time. I'm like, what are you watching movies on, mum? She's like, dodgy website. I'm like, so you support criminals then? And she's like, no. <laughs> yeah. When you put it like that, I probably it's, it's difficult to say no. Yeah. Um, you support. Really you su- you're uh, so so. You're the person. You're part of the people that are killing the industry, right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, that's such a dickish thing to say. 
Do you want me to keep it in? <laughs> or, no, or don't. take it out. Uh, no, no, don't, don't. Don't no keep it in. Keep, keep it in. Keep yeah? it in. It's fun. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll just keep not. this bit in as well then. <laughs> I'm just being an absolute cock end to my co presenter here, my buddy, my friend. <laughs> and I'm just being an absolute knob cheese to him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you have a good point. Like, I can't argue with that because you are right, essentially. You know, like, I. Yeah, yeah I. <laughs> If I was richer, I would pay for all these things. Mm-hmm. Mm. And I totally I totally understand and get that. There's so many services and you have to pay for this and pay for that and all sorts of shit. And it's very, it can become very expensive, yeah. especially the way how things are so tight these days. And the prices of the streaming services, although they're still pretty good, they are going up. And I understand it's difficult for some people to obviously pay for those, especially when you've got you know, four of them that you've got to have to be able to watch everything. So I totally understand why people go to other sites and watch stuff. It's, you know. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I'm not saying I'm an angel. I've definitely done it before. But in the last like 10 years, I've really tried to try and support, you know, film and TV, still go to the movies every month, yeah. watch one or two films. I, I don't know. I just I, I appreciate the art and the amount of effort that goes into it. So I feel like I don't mind giving my hard on many back to it because I, I want them to create things that I'll enjoy. Yeah. And um, although they do say that the uh, the blockbuster is dead. And, you know, spending all these money on TV shows is going out the window. So what they would call the the medium TV shows. So the medium price TV shows are coming back in. So making just good quality shows that don't cost a lot of money. And the same for movies as well. Movies are going down that route where studios don't want to spend millions of pounds on films anymore because they're only going to lose stuff. So yeah. the small to medium sized movies will come back in a big way in the next few years because nice. people will not want to spend the amount of money that they've spent so far on yeah. films. Like you see all these Marvel movies now and DC movies, they're all losing so much money. Yeah. Studios just aren't studios just won't continue to make them because they're they're um we're going through a bit of a lull at the moment where everything's changing so people quite aren't sure to put you know they don't go oh i know there's this movie i'll put a, and we will we'll get to a movie that says this we'll we'll get into that okay, we'll talk I'm about look, films but i'm looking forward to talking about films yeah because i have some opinions on that as well but yeah but yeah so the medium medium size and medium tv shows are definitely coming back in a big way so this twisted metal is probably a perfectly good example of that yeah where they haven't spent a, you know a, a, a massive amount on the show but you can still make if it's got a good quality script with good effects that you don't need to spend that much money on, you can still make a good quality show people enjoy. So, yeah, good stuff. Awesome. And in my defense, uh, <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> no, but, but no, we, we have only just stopped paying for Netflix a couple of months ago. Uh, so we were like, uh, Kelly got this, um, this dodgy thing, mo- like mainly for football. Um, so she can watch yeah. football matches, but we're, we're still paying for Amazon. I was paying for Disney up until a couple of months back. We were paying for Netflix. We we did have a load of them. You know, we stopped Sky ages ago. It's fucking ridiculous. But yeah, our, mm. our, our Netflix went up to £21. I think we were paying yeah. for it for about three months before realising. We were like, no, we ain't paying that much for it any, anymore. Mm-hmm. You can bugger off. Like, we, I think we started paying a tenner for it. and went, It went up. It doubled within, what, two, three years? Yeah, it did. Maybe a bit more. Yeah. So, yeah. Fuck him. Fuck him. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, there's too many of them as well. Like what we've got is it's kind of kind of like Spotify in a way. It's got everything that we want on there. Everything that we want to watch will be in this one subscription. Um yeah, nice. Where and, and like Spotify. Just imagine if all the little record labels had their own streaming thing and you had to pay you had to pay money to listen to, to Yeah. Do you could, yeah. could it go that way? Is there a chance that the record labels will go. Do you know what? I think we're Roadrunner. S- we we don't want to put our stuff on your channel. You won't. You give us. Yeah. So money. like a like a physical media version of online because. Well, I mean, yeah, they, be... they, they could have a streaming Roadrunner yeah. thing, so they won't be on any other streaming things. Yeah, you that's true. To you could do that. Bands pay yeah. fiver a month. If you want to listen to nuclear band bands? Pay a fiver a month. Yeah. In yeah, month. they could. Could easily go that way, dude. Yeah. Easily. Hmm. If Spotify fell tomorrow, it would be spread out over loads of different platforms. It's interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, have you got uh, TV shows? Any more TV shows do you want to talk about? 
Uh, yeah, I got one. I mean, we're watching in the. E- I'm not going to count all the evening shows we watch because in the evening we always stick on. Like at the moment, we're watching Arrested Development, which is another really great American comedy show. Um, so we're watching that. Um, we were watching Archer before that, and um, and before that we were watching Brooklyn Nine Nine. So it's just stuff we put on the TV while we're in bed, and we just relax and sort of watch it, go on our phones, and just you know don't pay too much attention. Sometimes pay attention to episodes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but what we've actually been watching, watching um, another comedy series is: Have you heard of What We Do in the Shadows? Kelly started watching that. Uh, yeah. That is a, yeah the vampire thing. Is that a bit like Renfield? That came out recently. Uh, it's a mockumentary. Okay. So there was a film, What We Do in the Shadows, um, right. which was the catalyst for this series, basically. So it's a it's a mockumentary about a documentary film crew following a bunch of vampires around <laughs> okay. um, and like documenting their lives. So in this world, you know, vampires are real, witches are real. It's like our world plus vampires, werewolves, you know, all the sort of all that sort of stuff right. um, but they actually exist but it's a comedy show so the vampires are absolutely hilarious you know they're just like normal <laughs> people but they're vampires so um yeah it's really really great amazing like comedy obviously some of the situations you get into as a vampire they can't go out in the day they can only go out at night and they've got a familiar uh, a guy who looks after them and does all their stuff and chores and takes care of the house and all that and um yeah it's just really really great fun they're just wrapping the final season up now which i think is season four or five um the last few episodes but we're on series three watching it back on disney plus um but they're just about to wrap it up now the final season but yeah it's excellent if you like good comedy um you know it's it's produced by uh, taika watiti um so he was the one who done the original film um so he done like thor okay. ragnarok love and thunder and loads of other oh, stuff as okay. well so yeah it's really good it's really worth um going into and uh matt berry is one of the vampires and matt berry is just one of the funniest people on the planet so um yeah really really worth a watch if you like anything comedy wise awesome uh yeah yeah kelly kelly started watching that uh, a couple nights ago actually when i'm doing other stuff if i'm editing the podcast or something you know she'll watch something that i'm not interested in um yeah. but i i think she decided not to bother carry on with that last night as well so uh oh, okay yeah, just, just, well, just not her kind of thing. I think she said just she, yeah. for sci-fi stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, I think maybe, maybe she's not that interested in the mockumentary style sort of thing. Get you. Yeah. Yeah, know. see, I like that. Because so, like, The Office is both Office, American and UK, two of my favorite shows of all time. Yeah, so I sure. like that mockumentary yeah. sort of, you know, getting, capturing people's, you know, pretend, but supposedly real reactions to stuff i like that yeah i never i never watched any of the offices office things um, oh kelly said i think kelly vastly said... different okay vastly different i mean ricky gervais obviously starred and you know was the center of the first what the, the uk one but he yeah. produced the american one okay and um i mean steve carell is a god yeah <laughs> he is a god he is a god among men and there are so many moments in that where it's so cringeworthy you can't even look at the screen. Yeah. And then there are some bits that are just so funny and amazing. So, yeah. I mean, I love the off. Both of them, I think, are two of the best shows ever made. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Never seen them. Although, there, wow. was, there was one similar that Kelly liked. Was it with Ricky Gervais again um, about actors? Um, oh, extras. Extras. Yeah. That is she liked that one. Brilliant as well. Yeah. Amazing. I, I I really like Ricky Gervais. I think he's fantastic I, in I do everything. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I do. He's got a really really good. I was actually watching. Um, have you ever seen um, uh, comedians in cars getting coffee with Jerry mm-hmm. Seinfeld? No. So Jerry Seinfeld, obviously from the show Seinfeld, he uh, gets like loads of fancy cars and he drives comedians around in them and then takes them to coffee shops and interviews them. <laughs> That is literally right. the premise of the show. Okay. Um, but because he's Jerry Seinfeld, one of the most popular comics in the world, he basically gets everyone. Like e- Eddie Murphy, Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart. Like he, yeah. he interviewed Obama on it, Jim Carrey. You know, just everyone basically that's like a comedian or a pretty famous person. That's where for good um, watch that is. It's not, you know, it's not a mockumentary. It's, it's an interview show. The interview episodes are only 20 minutes, but... You just reminded me that we were watching that the other day. It's yeah. Really good. Yeah. No, I've never seen it. Never even heard of it. Um, yeah. Comedians in cars comedians. getting coffee. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> no. 
know, you can't make anything out of that, out of the initials of them or anything. I wasn't sure if they were going <laughs> to say something funny in, in the initials. Have you ever watched Seinfeld at all? No. No, I've never, never. watched Seinfeld. Again, that's uh, that's up there for me. That is, without a doubt, one of the best sitcoms of all time. Yeah. I think. Really funny. Awesome. Literally, the show was pitched to the people um, as a show about nothing. And they parody that in the show. So in the show... Really? Yeah, because the show is about him being a comedian, which he was in real life. And they parody that in the show where they try and get a show made called Jerry <laughs> and they pitch it as a show about nothing. You know, two people having a conversation, that's a show. <laughs> and apparently that's what they did in real life. They literally went to NBC and said, they were like, what's your show about? And they're like, it's about nothing. Like, what did you do this morning? Uh, I got up and I came to work. They're like, there you go. That's an episode. <laughs> because <laughs> there's no real like linear there are like little storylines here and there but it's just people being people on the show which is so funny which is why it's so funny like and weird yeah so i think a show about nothing is a great idea <laughs> imagine going to like an actual you know a giant production company and they go so what's the show about to pitch it and you go the show's about nothing and they go well that sounds great we're going to give you nine seasons and it's going to be one of the biggest shows of all time <laughs> <laughs> I think that's so ballsy. Yeah, I don't really know. I didn't even know anything about it. I didn't know anywhere near it as much as that. Um, oh, okay. I'd never really heard about it. Not much about it, anyway. Oh, it's good. It's all on. Uh, it's all on Netflix. It's, yeah. So yeah. It's the whole, we've got nine seasons on there. It's great. But anyway, if you if you just want a sitcom to like throw on in the background and chillax and whatever, it's great. Yeah, we we are still gonna watch the one you said about in the in the pub uh, or in the bar or whatever it was. Um, oh, always sunny. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't got oh, onto it yet. Brilliant, awesome. Um, well, I, do you know, what? I've written, I've written loads down here. Uh, I didn't know how much detail we were going to go into, um, so I wrote down almost everything that we've watched this year, pretty much. Um, I'll talk about one more, and then I'll just list the others. And, okay, and say because because I said that there were a few that we got from the Discord as well from people in the Discord, and this is another one um, called From which was the last series we watched. Um, Stu put it in the Discord and said, Adam, I think you'd like this. And and a few other people were talking about it. Uh, no, nobody else was, else was talking about it, but it was when there was a lot of chatter like, between people about what was good and everything. Uh, but it basically, um, what happened was... Oh, that was terrible. I thought you might have even laughed at that, but I know it didn't work. Um, <laughs> basically, what happens is these people get stuck in a town they cannot leave um and they find out that nobody can leave and everyone's stuck there and oh. at night these monsters come out and just rip people to shreds oh okay um i was not expecting you to say that that sounds awesome yeah it's it is awesome and it is weird uh i, d I did say the second season gets a bit slow in the middle i was like nobody's talking to each other everyone's trying to work it all out and everyone come up with plans but no one's talking to each other saying, well, this is my plan. This is what, what have you got? And and it's uh, it got frustrating because they weren't talking to each other. But uh, I, I'm not going to do any more detail than that. Um, okay. Because, Premise sounds great, though. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. They, they, yeah. I, I want to tell, I want to say more, but it would just be spoilers because every okay. episode leads it, leaves it on a cliffhanger pretty much. And you're like, it gives you a little bit more of the story than a little bit more of the story and then a little bit more nice. of the story. And you're like, but. I want you to answer the questions that you put out four <laughs> episodes ago. But you're just giving me more questions. Come on, just give me something. That sounds like a. That sounds like Lost. That's what Lost used to do. It has been um, likened to Lost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I really loved Lost. It got very convoluted towards the end, but um, because the showrunners had no idea what they were doing from the after the first two seasons where they were making it up as they go when you watch lost and if you write down all the questions to which there are no answers there are more questions than answers <laughs> in the end and you're like yeah I, I i like shows like that sometimes but also like you said it's highly frustrating when you're like okay but what happened to that then so i guess we're just done with that then <laughs> like yeah that's just out the window or you never know they might go back at some point and aren't i think that's really good when shows do that when they don't tell you something or there's like a big thing that happened and then y y the show knows that it's forgot about it 
but you think the show is forgotten about it and won't remember it again. Yeah. And then someone brings it up or someone from that episode comes back into it or something's brought up or that episode had a direct link to something like two seasons later. I love when that happens because you're like, oh shit. You know, one of those moments where you're yeah. like a cliffhanger happens and someone comes back from like two seasons ago and you're like, oh my God, that was fucking amazing. Because you're not expecting it because you're like, what happened to this person or that plot thread? And then all of a sudden it comes back up. Yeah. I, lo- I love when shows do that. But you have to like, has to be done perfectly. Otherwise, like <laughs> yeah. you said, it just gets annoying where you're like, yeah, basically sh- shouting at the TV like, what the fuck happened? Someone <laughs> tell me. <laughs> it's what that reminds me of, just quickly, sorry. Vicky doesn't like, we'll get into films, but Vicky doesn't like when films or TV things end. You know, like sometimes to end a show or a movie abruptly and purposely not answer those questions yeah. so you can make up the answers. Yeah. Sometimes that really works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. She hates when TV <laughs> shows or movies end like that. And I quite like that because I'm like, I guess we have to decide what happened or make it up in our heads what happened. But she hates when stuff ends like that. Yeah. She wants everything answered concisely right after it happened. <laughs> I I can understand that. I I I don't like that. It bothers me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I I get it. I get it. I totally get it. Sometimes I think it's it's better though. Like everyone always moans about the end of The Sopranos where it just oh, we were cuts to talking black. to kids about that at your uh, your wedding. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never I, seen I, it. I think the the general consensus is I don't think anyone's decided whether that's good or bad yet, even okay. this long afterwards. Really? <laughs> Everyone's just like. I guess the show's over then. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is really cool. Again, it gets people talking. People still remember the ending of that show now. Yeah. yeah. Where there's a lot of other shows you've you've watched that you don't remember the endings of because they've just ended. So Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, sorry, we went totally off. But yeah. this uh the premise of this show sounds awesome. Oh, it is. Um the end of this so there's only been two seasons so far. The first season ends with nothing happening. Oh no, I shouldn't say that, should I? It it I I don't know I don't know whether that's a spoiler you you tell me but it's like the first two seasons were meant to be as one so it doesn't actually give uh, so so when we're okay. watching it I I thought to myself I would have been pissed off if we were watching it week by week and had to wait for season two because it uh, it yeah. doesn't have an end of a season it's the end of an episode and it it's like uh, the season two just continues on and we've had that with a few things recently I can't think of any others off the top of my head but like. Just make it in one up one season, or yeah, do it all together. Mm. Just answer some questions, like I said. Just give us closure on at least one or two things, not just have season one and yeah. two put in together, but have a massive long wait between season one and two. I think about that. Like I, I, I told Vicky, like some stuff we've watched. You know, when like it's already happened and you've got all the seasons on Netflix, and that season goes straight into the next one. Yeah. When I tell her like the things that I watched at the time, and we rewatch them. When there's like a really good cliffhanger of the end of a season, before the next season starts, I always say to her, and we had to wait another fucking year to see what happened. Yeah. But on Netflix, you can just get there. Yeah. But I'm like, some of the really good shows that I used to love that end on like amazing cliffhangers, and you're like, then we had to wait fucking 14 months yeah. to see what happened. Like, people don't, when you watch stuff every week, you're like, oh my God, no, we have to <laughs> wait a whole nother year now to find out what happened. Like, but you, you, people don't get that when you're watching old stuff because you get it all like there. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, um, yeah, it's true. You don't get the same effect as when you were like, fuck, we got to wait to see what <laughs> happened. Great, oh man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, shall I read the list of other stuff that I've watched? Yeah, I might, fire them off. I might give Boy, like one or off. two sentences on each one. So recently, we also watched Good Omens too. Uh, that oh, is... I haven't watched it yet. Watched, loved the first series. It's very, very good. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, Brilliant. As a Terry Pratchett fan, I loved it like so much. Nice. I don't think the set the, the second one was actually a book. I think they needed one book, and so they've had to do the second season with uh, Neil Gaiman. So, so he's got the the right ideas. But yeah, it was so nice. good. Really, really good. I thought you'd Which like is. that because of David Tennant. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. So good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I loved, I loved it. Any, I, as soon as I saw the trailer for that first series, I was like, yeah. I am watching that show. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, I'm good. I'm glad to hear that the the second series is awesome. Second one is awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, we watch that. Uh, we watched Cider recently, which is from a came from a book. There's a trilogy. Uh, I don't actually remember what the names are at the moment, but Kelly's read them. 
they're basically underground in a silo um trying to live like they've got the whole world down there because the, the above ground is disintegrated is gone um so they've got the whole uh what's the right word civilization underground in a silo nice and it's like yeah a big crime thing going on trying to work out what's going on um yeah very good wicked that sounds good yeah it is really good the the last of us we watched that recently uh not when it nice. not when it first came out we we put it off a little bit i never actually played the game but um me neither me neither no. But the TV oh, people have given me, given me shit for that. <laughs> apparently, it's they're amazing. I, I tried it. Oh, actually, yeah. So I, actually, I just lied. Um, I tried it. I played the game up until like they get to like a hotel in the in the city, and I couldn't do it. I just got frustrated trying to do all the stealth stuff, and it, I, it's <laughs> just not my kind of game, you know. And, and that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Don't have to like everything. No, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I, I was, I, I've tried it a few times because everyone says how amazing it is. So I was like, all right, I'll give it another go. Maybe I will like it this time. Maybe, maybe but no, uh, I wasn't wrong. It's not my kind of game. Uh, so I was glad I could watch the TV show because that was really good as well. Really, really good. I can understand. Nice. Yeah, I heard good things. If the storyline follows what the game does, I can understand why people love that game so much. What else have we got? Oh, I don't know what. I won't go into too many more. Uh, Snowpiercer. Have you seen that? There was a film a few years, well, quite yeah, a few years. Film back. was great. The TV Chris show, Chris Evans, brilliant. Was it? Yeah, TV show. We've done like three seasons now. Also, really, really good. So, what I was saying about Silo was it's basically Snowpiercer, but vertically underground instead of underground. in a train on the top. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Nice. Um, but yeah, it basically the whole world has got very, very cold, <laughs> very, very cold. Uh, but there's this train that just constantly goes around the world. And they're, they're all, everyone's living on this train. It's uh, Originally, it's 1,001 cars long. And they've got, like, pubs and bars and everything in there. They've got everything they need. Um, and it's basically the back of the train fighting against the front of the train. The further forward you get, the higher your class, like first class or whatever. And they don't like it at the back. They call it the tail. And they just, all they have to do, all they get to eat is this weird black jelly stuff. <laughs> and they're, 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 they're Awesome. Yeah, they're there for, like, years before they actually have like start a rebellion um and the last one i want to talk about is yellow jackets another one that was uh suggested yeah, in, the, in the discord really good we were at most of these that we watched we were addicted to but yellow jackets yeah we just couldn't get enough of it i think it was american women's football team are on a plane they crash on an island or in a jungle um yeah they're basically trying to escape but supernatural things are going on and it is really, really good as well. Uh, nice. I can't say any more than that um, because of spoilers. But yeah, we were addicted to that. So, so good. Oh, Wicked. again, similar to Lost, I'd imagine. Yeah, sounds sounds similar. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, that was it. There was probably more. Well, there was more on my list, but I wasn't going to go through all of them. We talked about films a little bit. Let's do films last because we could probably we got a lot on films and I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, we just talked about TV as well, so let's yeah. let's mix it up, dude. Let's yeah. go for games then, shall we? Oh, baby! What you told me earlier, you have just done a games game playthrough for. Your I YouTube. have, yes. Wait, well, this this will be coming out afterwards, won't it? So yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can reveal it what it will, is. Will yes, yeah, uh, yeah. So I just released the first part of playing. A game that me and you have talked about before. Yeah. Because we were going to do a games episode and I was going to review this game for the episode, which I still will do in more in depth. Yeah. By the cool. moment, I'm just playing it. Uh, so I thought, obviously, you know, the channel, the YouTube channel is based around rock and metal. So I thought, well, let's play a rock and metal game. So I had already downloaded um, a copy of the Dreamcast version to Retroarch. So for all, oh, let's play that. So I'm playing, two, two, it came out in 2000, Kiss... The Nightmare Psycho so, so long. <laughs> Kiss Psycho Circus The Nightmare Child, which is like a really strange kiss orientated first person shooter. Very it's, nice. Yeah, it's very odd, but it's nice to do like a finally to do a game playthrough on the channel. Yeah. Um because I've just wanted to do it. So I put it on there. So if you haven't seen that, go and watch it. Cause um if people are enjoying that, I will do more of it. I've just done a part one, which is like an hour playthrough. And if people like that, I'll continue to sort of play the game. And then once I finish that, play other games if people are enjoying that kind of content. At the moment with YouTube, I'm literally throwing loads of stuff to the wall to see what sticks. Yeah. So hopefully people enjoy me playing retro 
games on there. But yeah, it's a. Uh, I've obviously only played like an hour of it, but it's so fucking weird. Is it? It's such a weird game. Yeah, like you go through and you're this guy called Avatar, which is like a, the most standard name you can get for someone who's just nothing. Yeah. Um, and as you go through the game, at the end of every level, you get another, um, you get a weapon and then you get like another bit of Kiss clothing. So you start off in like normal boots and a normal top and then you get like a Kiss belt. <laughs> um, big spiky boots like Gene Simmons and then you get like a top and they give you special powers like to jump higher or punch things harder or whatever um, but yeah I, I I heard that it was actually pretty decent and it runs really smoothly actually it's a really good game and like their enemy AI is pretty good as well like I'm really enjoying it I've actually had a few like jump scare moments where stuff's just like come out of nowhere so yeah yeah that's a really cool game to start playing I think and obviously you know, rock orientated. It kind of fits in with the channel, but yeah, I've really been enjoying it. But I'll do more if people like it. So if you haven't checked out my Kiss playthrough, go and check it out. Awesome. I might play some more of it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, although, yeah. yeah, like you said, we were we are planning on doing an episode in the style of my previous podcast. So we'll have the two guys I had on as well. I will be hopefully playing Ed Hunter. Um, yes. Yeah, and I can't remember what games I gave the other two. We we did plan on doing it. Well, we, we weren't meant to do it ages ago, weren't we? But I think something happened. One of us couldn't make it. Uh, we never got around to rearranging yeah, we, it. So, we yeah, we've back. got yeah. that coming in the future. That's that's going to be awesome. Hells, yeah. But what the game I'm playing at the moment is Baldur's Gate 3. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Do you, you, you know much about it? Do you Have you heard? I've heard a lot about the Baldur's Gate games themselves yeah. and uh, seen it, but I've never actually played Baldur's Gate. Okay, uh, I I don't know much about the first and second one. Yeah, I think they were meant to be amazing. I want to say the second one was one of the first games that allowed mods. I'm not sure. Oh, Maybe the first one. So, I nice. think I've heard something along those lines recently, uh, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it's basically set in the Dungeons and Dragons world. The Baldur's Gate is in. Oh, now I'm testing my knowledge. I can't remember what the uh, Dungeons and Dragons world is. Shit. That's annoying me. Anyway, so it's set in that world, but but it's done by um, Larian Studios, who did Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2. And and that's basically, a it's called a CRPG. So it's like a top-down RPG. You've got to click to move instead of using arrows or a controller. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's a turn-based strategy game. And they basically made Baldur's Gate 3 in exactly the same way, but incorporate, incorporated a lot of the D&D rules into it, D&D 5, 5th edition. Um, I nice. have heard they've used some of 3rd edition or 3.5 edition. But yeah, it's uh, I haven't played it, I was going to say, I haven't played it that much. I'm still in Chapter 1 or, or um, Act 1, and I have played it probably, probably for about 40 hours, but it feels like I haven't played it very much because I haven't done very <laughs> much in it. Uh, it does take a little while to do things. Uh, because it's turn-based and sometimes you have loads and loads of people fighting you and you just sat there waiting for them to do something and then you have all <laughs> all four of your players like shoot something at them or, or try and hit them and they all miss. So that's that whole turn wasted and you got to wait for it to come around to your turn uh. again. <laughs> but no, it's really good. I um, so I, I haven't actually played Dungeons & Dragons for a little while now. I used to talk about it all the time at the beginning of the show, at like the first few episodes. But yeah, just over a year now I haven't played. And I miss it, man. I really miss it. So if we've got anybody out there that plays and wants, uh, if we've got any DMs as well, at least I would love that. Nice. I'd love to play again. If someone else was explaining that game to me, I would have said, this is right up Adam's street. <laughs> 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 like everything you've just said to me is how I would explain to someone a game that you would like. Yeah, nice. <laughs> like it sounds exactly like a game that would just be like, perfect for you yeah i mean what well, the thing is you can do anything you want pretty much just like dungeons and dragons it's quite early on this is not going to be going to be a spoiler but there's a goblin camp and they're all getting drunk and you can poison their alcohol to kill them all and it's like it doesn't tell you you can do that you can just decide you right. can just go over and put some poison in it like and and there's so many other things like so many different outcomes you can do um there's like two people two two groups of people against each other you can choose which side to be on you can be on one team and then kill them all and and sort of pretend <laughs> you're on their, their side but you're actually not um there's so so many things in so many ways there's a guy that is a 
play a character you, you, you can get him into your party yeah. called will and uh, he's trying to kill this other woman that you can also get as, as, as a player character and, and when you, you when you meet her she's all like apologetic and saying you know he's been lied to but you can't so yeah one thing i'm looking forward to doing is like because you can change the classes that everybody is um so so the guy is a warlock and he it's his um god basically told him to kill her but if you change ah, what okay. class they are they have different dialogue and they act differently so i'm wondering if you change his class so he doesn't actually have that god before you meet her is he still trying to kill her and it's loads ah, of little things nice. like that in the game that that they have oh, sorry to knock this in knock down loads of little things like that in the game that you can do you can you can play around with you can see what what happens because they've written it into That's the game awesome. of like how to yeah yeah it's amazing nice but I, that sounds awesome yeah oh man it's so good uh i i found a little bit of a no i won't go into that but yeah i missed D D man uh my first character uh so my, my original character that got killed off last time i was playing was a, a sorcerer a shadow sorcerer so i tried recreating him uh but it didn't really work nice. so now i've got a monk who's going around beating people up oh cool yeah <laughs> mm. i love it but yeah I, I, I can use this shadow spell so enemies can't see me but all of my characters can see out because they've all got a, nice. they've got two levels in warlock who've got devil sight that's a for, for, nice. for anybody who plays will know what that is you basically can see in magical darkness so you can see them, they can't see Whoa. you, and it's like every fight's easy now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm I'm cheesing it a little bit, but oh, yeah, why not? It's in the it's in the game. Yeah. Um. One other thing I want to talk about, you know, like a lot of games have like new game plus or like a, a, a hard, like really really hard mode, like challenge mode. This one has got yeah. something called the dark urge. Your your character is trying to kill everyone and everything, including your party members. So if you do certain things. Like it, it, it might not even give you a choice at some point. It might just have show a cutscene, cutscene of you killing your friend because you have to be uh-huh. killing it. You have to kill it. Um, so that makes wow. it so much harder, apparently. But but everybody acts different towards you because <clears throat> you're not the good guy. You're the big. So you you're obviously going up against a big bad, but you are also a big bad. So they treat you like a bad guy when when so when sometimes they treat you like a good uh-huh. guy, or you would come up to some bad guys and they treat you as a friend because that's you're, awesome yeah apparently it changes the game so much that's wicked yeah it sounds great it sounds like so complex that like you could do loads and loads of different stuff yeah you can <laughs> that's absolutely you amazing. just think about how do people like write these games how do people code these games for all this stuff to work and you just think about how much effort goes into a game like that and you just think that's mind-blowing yeah well the the, the um the open i think it was open beta was available about three years ago so like it blew my mind when they finally announced the release and i was like so since i was since i played it before in the open beta a massive team of people have worked on it every weekday every, every day five days a week all day oh, yeah for three years to create this like just ha- yeah it just blew my mind how much work went into it thinking about how many yeah. days hours people oh yeah how many hours would have gone into it in that time oh, with with no yeah, money coming in either around the clock yeah, you don't get the money until after the game is released. And well, unless you do. Mad. Yeah, crazy. Mad, but awesome. Yeah. Or well, um. Anyway, I've spoken a lot about that because I really like that. Have you got any other games you're playing at the moment or want to talk about? Uh, yeah. Well, we just uh we finished off this was the beginning of the summer. We finished off um La Noir finally. Yeah. Because we we played it three quarters of the way through. Uh, and for some reason didn't finish it. I can't remember what happened. This when we living at the old house. So when we moved here. We thought right. We're going to play it. So we played LNOR start to finish. Obviously, incredible game. Just brilliant. Vicky loved it. She loves anything crime related. She watches a lot of crime shows, documentaries and stuff like that. So we can get anything crime related. Yeah. Um, we thought it was fantastic. One thing I have realized in games, though, when we when we play GTA in the past and this is <laughs> Vicky cannot do any driving in a game. <laughs> she will smash into absolutely everything <laughs> possible. Like I sent my brother videos of Vicky driving and he's just like, oh my God. I said, this is her when she's actually got better, like <laughs> genuinely. She's got better at driving, but she's still all over the place. So that bit of this game was funny because if it came to a driving, she'd be like, can you do it? Or then we realized there was a bit where you could press it 
and the character would automatically take you to that place if she started doing loads of that instead of actually <laughs> driving uh, but when like a chase came up or something it would just be like oh my god here we go so i get the camera out and send my brother loads of videos um but yeah we completed that which was great nice. then we played another game i'm not sure a lot of people have heard of but i consider it to be a classic it's called alan wake yeah i've heard of that i haven't played it okay yeah so so it's like a it's a third person i say third person shooter but it's more like a third person sort of investigate in supernatural thriller so you're this guy called alan wake obviously you're a writer you've gone away with your wife to this like place in the middle of nowhere to write your new next novel she goes missing and as you're playing through the game you realize that what he's written in this novel is all coming to life and coming true and there's these like dark energies following you around and you use light to kill them so you've got like a a a torch basically and you've got to get a certain amount of batteries to go through the level because when it goes dark all these weird things come out yeah um it's so good it's on 360 um it's a classic and i made vicky play it and she hated it because she shit herself every (laughs) five minutes because um yeah i was playing it i was like this is like some of the bits are like dead space level i'm gonna shit myself scary um but yeah if you like like noir crime supernatural stuff like alan wake is a really really fantastic game definitely a 360 classic for me really really yeah. really good um i'll just shoot through the other two that i've got quickly. Yeah, cool. uh so we I, we started playing mass effect which i think i've spoken to you about yeah, before. I, started playing that. I told you i consider yeah i consider mass effect 2 to be probably the greatest game of all time i think um definitely the greatest science fiction game of all time without a doubt um so we just started going through the first one to vicky sort of get used to it so we started a new career on that and we're going through as a specter to kind of just get her feels out really and the great thing about that game is you know you can make choices you can choose what you say in conversation you can choose to do things be a bad guy you can choose to be a bit of a dick you can choose to be nice the way you run the ship the way you do your armor upgrade your weapons all that sort of shit so yeah it's like a third person space orientated rpg with cutscenes, basically yeah um, i loved it so yeah definitely yeah it's really really great yeah. so the first game's not the best it's great to get a foothold of the universe the second game is like i said hands down one of the best games of all time and the third one is really good even though a lot of people hated the ending but i don't mind because you can choose your ending so okay yeah i've played it played it through before yeah. but yeah she's absolutely loving it so really good to get her into that because it's one of my favorites and finally we ha- are just wrapping up uh lego marvel heroes nice. on ps4 which is a game that we've had a lot of fun with because obviously you can play it two player. Yeah. So we've just whizzed through all the whizzed through all of the um, actual levels in the game, and now we're going through all of the free play and doing all the little side quests and collecting all the characters. Yeah. So yeah, we've really enjoyed the. I think we played all the Harry Potter ones, all the Star Wars ones, uh, and now we're on the. So we got Marvel Heroes one, and then Marvel Heroes two. We're going to get afterwards, and yeah. then just jam it's just something good to just Um, stick on in the evening yeah we're just chilling and we can just play you know the lego games and just have fun basically but also some of the like problem solving on some of them i'm like that was really hard to do yeah like aren't these games made for children (laughs) because kids would never be able to solve that puzzle you'd have to be really intelligent or of a certain age to do it like kids below like you know five that play video games would find some of those puzzles really really hard to do i can see kids getting stuck on a lot of the levels so i was always miffed as like even on the harry potter ones i was like how are you supposed to figure that out like some of the stuff we genuinely had to google because we were like i can't figure out where we're supposed to go now yeah and it's a fucking lego game yeah they they are can be difficult so we played through that one with my son um and he was amazing at it nice i want to go back to going back to um mass effect so yeah, I started playing that. I absolutely loved it. I was going to play all three of them, but I got burnt out on it. I think uh, so. I did. I think I did oh, really? like the first mission or first main main mission or two, and then I went and did a few side quests, and I did another main mission, and then I thought I'm going to go down around do all the side quests. So I was overpowered because that's what I do in RPGs. You you, you grind uh, yeah. a little bit so you get overpowered, um, so you don't struggle with the main missions. But there was loads and loads of side quests. I must have done about 15 side quests. And they're all very similar, aren't they? Like you go to a, go to a world, yeah. you find a base there, and you kill the people at that base. You kill the big worms that come up. And I think I just got a bit burnt out with it. I, I didn't 
do I did too many side quests in a row before going back to the the story main game and um, and I've not touched it since and I, I know that's why I got burnt out with it but yeah I haven't wanted to play it since it's really annoying is that was that the, was that the that, first that was one? the first one yeah I think the main the last main mission I did was you get some kind of arachnid queen or spider queen that had, had been captured and you can choose to let her go leave her or yes. kill her yeah and I was like this is incredible because I think I'd heard it has repercussions that, yeah. further in the game yeah, yeah it does yeah yeah. And I was like, yeah, I've not played a game like this before where such a massive decision plays out later on, later on in the game until... Yeah, I will say about the, the first one, the first one can get a bit sloggy in places because it is quite repetitive. Right. Um, the main missions aren't, but the little side quests are. Yeah. They solve that problem in the second one. Okay, cool. The second one feels uh not necessarily more linear but it it you don't get bogged down in doing side quests that are all the same there's a lot more the actual main part of the game is more expansive right so you feel like all of the side quests are side quests but they're actually part of the of the actual game which i think why the second one is way stronger than the first one yeah so i think that if you just continue going through that main story and you get to the second one as soon as you start playing that, you'll be like, right, they've solved that problem. Because yeah. that was one of the main issues with the with the first one. Awesome. Yeah, I, I probably will get back to it at some point. I want to go a bit more time. Um, but Baldur's Gate will take most of my time, most oh, of my yeah. gaming time. Because Definitely. once I do it once, I'm going to Definitely. try it with a different character and then try it on the hard mode. And then I'll probably have all these ideas going through. I'm going, what will happen if, if I do it this way with this character? <laughs> like, uh, just oh, so many, so many good things. But yeah, um, back to Lego. Uh, similar to what you just said, the second Lego game is far superior to the first one, the Marvel one. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's okay. nothing wrong with the first one, but I was blown away by how good the second one is. Um, okay. Marvel, Lego Marvel Avengers is also very good. Um, and Ooh, yeah. Lego Batman 3 we've also got, which was amazing, but we never got around to doing anything because Soren didn't want to do things the normal ways. He would just want to mess around with characters i've got <laughs> i've got um yeah so oh, yeah so so when i went back back through during the pandemic i had to shield i think i've said before um uh, yeah. he was two and a half when i first started shielding and he started playing spyro a little bit and he wasn't very good oh great game yeah he wasn't very good at it to start with but he kept at it and he got really really good at a really young age and lego marvel superheroes is the second game he ever picked up and played and we played that so much. The music in that just brings back so much, uh, just like the overworld um, music that you get. <clears throat> but he nice. he knew every superhero. Oh, I'm looking forward to the to the other Marvel game. Now you've said that. Yeah. Oh, it's good. Uh, yeah. Just it, not just yeah, not just the 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 levels like the overworld bit. There's so much to do. Like so many different areas. It's really good. But um, nice, yeah. Soren knew every single, um, well, not every single hero in it, but most of them. He knew knew all the main ones. You know, you get to a bit and like in free play and go, oh, I need a character that does fire, and he'll go and pick a character that I've never seen before, and he go, this one does fire, <laughs> uh, but he knows it's a fire and, and character. Yeah, he he doesn't remember a lot of them anymore, which is sad because that was probably probably two and a half to three years ago now and he's played it a little bit every now and then since but we played it so so much like hundreds of hours just the two of us or well, well yeah. awesome and he got that's cool it's a nice little bonding experience yes yeah. yeah very he, cool like i said he was good at spyro as well like when he when he discovered that well when we found when we discovered that he he's able to jump and press like fire at the same time and he's running around now and he's just killing everything in sight instead of having to look down at <laughs> the controller to work out which way he needs to go yeah. yeah yeah he's got he's got the feel of the controller where the buttons are yeah Mem- muscle memory yeah. has remembered where everything yeah. is that is actually crazy isn't it like when you get used to a control you know any controller really and you're just like blah, 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 blah. you don't even look you're just yeah. like yeah blah, yeah blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah that's cool yeah and uh what's your actually this is a good question quickly what's your favorite controller console wise PlayStation. of all time would you PlayStation. say uh, like which, oh, which, which one? one um i mean there are so many different iterations of the playstation controller yeah uh probably ps4 i would say 
it is a yeah. very comfortable controller. I haven't, I haven't played my PS5 very much. Um, but yeah, so PS4 is the best one. PlayStation 2 was nice at the time because it, it was yeah, it's quite good. such a good... I mean, it was nothing on PS3, but PS2 was one, when I was younger. I played a lot more games with it. Um, yeah. So much more nostalgia with the PS2 than anything else, I think. Oh, the PS2 was a great console. PlayStation knocked out the part of all. I, uh, I think PlayStation 3 was the weakest one for me because I was always a 360 guy. Yeah. So, yeah, like 360s. I think th- my two favorite controllers of all time are 360 controller and the N64 controller. Yeah, is N64, yeah. One of the most, one of the most comfortable. Eggs. Oh, shit. Do your eggs. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> one of the most comfortable, just easy controllers to hold. Yeah. To have the fire button underneath was a fucking genius idea. Yeah. I just think that the whole controller was amazing with the two sides. I think just think it was brilliant. But yeah. But I like the PlayStation controller. PS4 controller is really, really comfortable. Nice to use. Buttons feel great. Um, although my brother bought his PS5 over and I did think that that controller is really nice, especially with the um the little reverberation thing that it's got in it. The um, what's it called? Uh aptic feedback or whatever it is. I, I, no, um, where you feel every tiny little like shot and movement yeah through the controller i've not played it which is uh, i I said not very much i've not played it at all yeah really good really yeah Yeah, it's good it's nice it's good yeah like i've I've still got a ps4 um i haven't moved to a ps5 i won't do for a long time i'm always i always wait for a platform to get like a at least you know four or five years worth of games yeah yeah and then i just go into cex and i'm like oh what do i want to play rather than buying a new console and then sitting and waiting for <laughs> stuff to come out i like to sort of go backwards a little bit and then get all of my back catalog and play all the games yeah so yeah nice controller awesome um i had a couple more games that i want to talk about but i'll just do one because we're getting on a bit um the, the pretty, well, pretty much the only other game i'm playing at the moment is a game called clash mini uh which is part okay. is it's a mobile game it's part of the clash series so obviously which obviously started with clash of clans uh they had clash royale and so this one is clash mini and it is of the auto chess genre ah. have you heard of auto chess like... uh, i think i know what it is okay so a quick history of auto chess for well from the beginning how auto chess was created for anybody who doesn't know blizzard released uh warcraft 3 reign of chaos and you could have mods um you, you could mod it. People could mod it. And somebody brought out a mod called Dota, which is Defense or, defense or Defender of the Ancients, um, which is was, I think, I believe, the very first MOBA. Uh, then somebody else, I can't remember who they were, built, uh, brought out Dota 2 as a standalone game. Uh, Dota 2, you can mod. Someone modded the pieces from Dota 2 into uh, an auto chessboard. So basically, you buy... Uh, your pieces. Oh, bugger me! Uh, you go. You get a certain amount of resources each um, each round, and you can buy pieces. You can upgrade pieces. You can either have lots and lots of pieces down, or you can keep upgrading the the few pieces you've got. Okay. And you you only work out what you have and where you put them, and then when they fight, it is auto. You don't get to choose what they do. Get each you. of the each okay. of the yeah. characters has different things some are tanky they like they have special abilities so they'll sort of block um damage coming in or others will be like assassins basically the the characters from dota 2 and so yeah that was uh dota auto chess it was a mod in dota 2 and then other people brought out auto chess games so the people who do league of legends riot they made one which was team fight tactics um under okay. oh, what was it underlords something underlords somebody else made one and eventually they had uh, someone made an auto chess game in warcraft 3 so it went full circle <laughs> from <laughs> warcraft 3 nice. dota dota 2 nice. auto chess auto chess in uh well it was amazing but uh yeah it's uh, basically a, um a mobile game that is auto chess and it's probably one of the best ones i've ever played um nice. very addictive it's you play against other people um so it's very competitive you've got a ladder so if you win you gain trophies if you lose you lose trophies i've been playing it for about oh, awesome. a month now and it is so addictive it's so tactical i've hit a wall now where i don't know how to beat the people i'm up against but um yeah very fun game nice that sounds awesome yeah very, very cool i like the story as well strategic yeah 
I mean, I was I was I was quite Wicked. good at Hearthstone when when well, it was a few years back now when when it was first out. So I I do quite like competitive games. I do like games where you have to think rather than react like shooters. You know, I like thinky yeah, yeah. games, strategy games. Yeah, strategic. That's cool. Yeah. So that's what I'm playing at the moment. Um, nice. and nothing else. That's it. Shall we move on to something else? Should we move on to fil- films? Yeah, I think that's all we got left. We did say board games. I haven't played any board games for ages. So unless you've got something you want to talk about. Well, we could do we could do a whole episode about board games. We could. I yes, I'd be more than happy about that. I mean we could do a whole episode about all of these subjects. Yeah, but and yeah. we will. We'll squeeze in movies. We'll squeeze in movies at the end. Yeah. Here. Yeah. We did, we did say we're gonna do a full episode about movies with Chids and uh Seagers on as well, didn't we? Um Yeah, we will. That'll be good. We'll delve into some we'll get some top ten lists or top five lists together from the guys and genres and we'll speak about all sorts of in-depth stuff when it comes to films with those guys, 100%. Films then. I actually don't have anywhere near as many films as I do TV shows, so this could be a bit of a shorter one for me. Okay. About you. It's probably longer for you. Well, just it? talk about... You still go to the cinema and, and everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen quite a few films in the cinema this year. Um, what What would you like to talk about first then? Tell me your thoughts on Barbenheimer, because I have theories. Well, I saw both in the cinema. Um, we went to see Oppenheimer first, obviously, because that's the most important. Um, okay. And the one that I really wanted to see. And then, of course, afterwards, I went to see Barbie um, with Vicky because she really wanted to see it. And I was intrigued. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to watch it. Um, what do you mean by my theory? No, do you I mean to tell I, you what I thought I have, of both I have movies theories. first. What or? do you think? Oh, okay. What do you mean? What do you think? What, did, so, did, go with your did, theory. Did Let's you... go into your theory first. Okay. So, as someone who strikes a lot, I was very good at temping bowling, and I'm a postman. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay um yeah they're obviously when they when these were released the strikes were on the the i don't know if it is it's not right it's not a writer strike this time or is it that was 2008 it's like everyone isn't it all the yeah. actors and everything and and so they had nothing to make nothing to do so they decided to plow as much money as they could into the marketing for these films like i want i, I never did it i really wish i had but I wanted to go back and look at some of the other films that were released this year and sort of mm-hmm. think well, if, if they'd marketed that more, would it have been like more successful? Um, but yeah, so so I, I, I did read after having that theory, Barbie, the, the marketing budget for Barbie was more than it, how much it was to actually make the film. And, and so I think it was the hype. <laughs> they, they built these films up with massive hype. I can't, I haven't seen them, so I can't. And this is just a theory. This is just a theory. I haven't looked into it. This is just my skepticism of, of, of being on strike as well. I know what the companies will do to make you uh, look and feel like an asshole. Um, yeah. To to the public, you know. So yeah, I I, I think it was just hyped up with all the marketing um, released at the same time. Barb and Hybrid, the whole thing. It was. It was um, manufactured to, so more people went to the cinema, and that, not I'm, I don't, I'm not saying necessarily that's a good or bad thing, but I feel like that's what was done. Yeah, yeah, you could very much be right. I mean, it's weird that two completely different films were, put, you know, obviously that happens all the time. Films put out at the same time, same time, but yeah, obviously Barbie had a massive, massive push marketing wise. I still think though that. Yeah, it wouldn't might not have made back the billion dollars that it made, but it still would have made a lot of money purely because it was a Barbie movie. Yeah, and casting Margot Robbie in it also helped massively because she's so marketable and well liked throughout everything. So I still, I definitely think you're right. I definitely think there was some marketing ploy, or I don't know what the companies were thinking, but putting them together and they're like two of the biggest films. That I've been watching the cinema for a long time, apart from the last Avengers Endgame. Yeah. I can see why that theory would be put. Yeah. And that's crazy because these are two standalone movies where, you know, yeah. Avengers Endgame was built up over a space of ten years. Yeah. And that's why that f- those films ended up to be so big and huge. So yeah, you could be perfectly right. Definitely. I definitely think there's something in that. Obviously, you know. The money that was spent on Barbie was worth it because it made a 
absolute shed load of money. So did Oppenheimer, which I'm really glad about because yeah. the more money we can give Christopher Nolan to make movies, the better. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, just give that man all the money and he will churn out something really, really great like he always does. Um, should I talk a little bit about the films quickly? Yeah, yeah, go for it. So, 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 so Oppenheimer, right? A lot of people watched Oppenheimer and went, well, that was boring because they were expecting... I don't know why they're expecting, but they're expecting an action film with loads of explosions because <laughs> it was about someone who created a giant bomb. When in fact, there's only one bomb goes off that goes off in the whole movie. There's <laughs> one action scene in the entire film, yeah. pretty much. The rest of the film is literally people either standing around or sitting around talking, which for me is perfectly fine because if the script is good enough and the acting is fantastic... I'm on board if a movie just people talking to each other. Yeah. Other people, not so much. They want to go to the cinema and be entertained with, it, you know, what the Marvel universe is created, basically. They yeah. want to have explosions and quips and characters and all sorts of shit flying, CG shit flying all over the screen. Whereas that is not a Christopher Nolan movie normally. It has parts of those things in it. Um, but I loved Oppenheimer. I thought it was brilliant. I thought that Killian Murphy was absolutely unbelievable. Although I think in the actual film that Robbie Downey Robert Downey Jr. absolutely steals the show in that movie, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I think his portrayal is absolutely flawless and brilliant. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I, I I give it a good eight or nine out of ten. I thought it was fantastic. Um, right, Barbie. Right. <laughs> okay. So look, the way the film looks is fantastic. The world that they've created is brilliant. You know, it it does look like a Marv, a Barbie, you know, kids set imagination come to life. I I loved that about the film. Um, the the bit about the film that I didn't like. I mean, listen, empowering women is fantastic, and I'm all for it. Uh, like Vicky said, but this really annoyed her. Um. I don't identify as a feminist, but I support every part of feminism, if that makes sense. Okay. I wouldn't call myself a feminist, but I'm on board. <laughs> okay? Right. Like, 100%. Yeah. Um, to get women equal everything that men have. I don't see any problems or issues with that. I've never had a problem with that, um, and I never will. I do feel, though, that the film itself... Basically, right, if I... So Transformers, right? 2007 Transformers, right? Transformers was like my Barbie, basically, right? I grew up with Transformers, playing with Transformers, reading the comment, c- c- uh, the comments, comments, you know, uh, watching watching the, the, the cartoons growing up. And I loved the first Transformers film. I thought it was everything I wanted Transformers come to life. Now, if my Transformers movie had been filled to the brim with social issues and taken away from the fact that I want to watch a Transformers movie about robots fighting each other, I would have been very upset. So although this film has loads of stuff about empowering women, I feel like it had so much of it in that it took away... Like, basically, if I was just a fan of Barbie and I didn't want to know about social issues because that's not what my Barbie toys are about... I would be severely pissed off if I was a Barbie fan, but obviously cared about social issues, but didn't necessarily want that in my Barbie film. So it really, I enjoyed the film for what it was, but every time they mentioned something to do with feminism or something like that, it took me out of the film. Like, I don't mind social issues being put into movies. I think that's fine. But this was not a, you know, this was like on the nose, let's smash it with a hammer and just keep it going all the way throughout the film. And I think that that, that bogged it down for me from being just a movie about Barbie. Um, yeah. I also think that men weren't represented very well at all in this <laughs> film at all. <laughs> in fact, it's a very anti-man, which is fine. You know, yeah. I'm sure there are anti-women films. Um but when I was in there, I was just going, oh, <laughs> someone in here is probably going to kick my head in in a minute. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah, so as a movie, it was good. It looked fantastic. Um, I thought the sets looked brilliant. Um, I liked the actors in it. I thought everyone was great. Um, but I just feel like the social issues took away from the fact it was a Barbie film. Like, you could have took Barbie out of that movie completely, written a completely different, put another character in, 
had the same things in and it would have been very similar uh, social issues wise. So yeah. like I said, I support all those things, but I don't necessarily want them thrown in my face when I'm trying to enjoy a movie. Yeah. If that makes sense. I don't mind undertones of social issues or if the film is specifically about that, but it kind of felt forced into a Barbie movie because it was about girls growing up playing with toys, which obviously I understand, but I just I just didn't like that. It felt really forced into it rather than just a movie about Barbie. So yeah, that's the bit I didn't like about the film. Okay. But as a, yeah, I mean, you might enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm scared so, to say anything to that because I don't know. I don't know what to say, and I don't want to fill it like put something filler in that I might regret <laughs> at a later date. That's taken the wrong way. Uh, so I don't. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Like I said, I enjoyed the movie. I just thought it was too too filled with social issues yeah. and not enough about actually just bar just being a Barbie movie. Yeah, that's that was fair. my only problem with the film. Yeah, well, but, but overall. Everything else I enjoyed. Cool. Um, we had, like, like I said, I, I didn't see either of them, um, so I can't really comment. Uh, I haven't really heard much about them, apart from the whole hype about it. Everyone's going mm-hmm. to watch them doing a d- doubler, you know, seeing one, then seeing the, the other one after. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, it was so great for both of those films to go into the cinema, and it was absolutely packed. And coming from someone who goes frequently, where sometimes it's packed, Sometimes there's, f- there's no one there and other times it's quite busy. It feels really good to go and watch a film and, you know, see so many people in the cinema. But I don't know, it's super expensive, you know, buying stuff and going in and watching movies. I love that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all behind cinema. So I was just grateful that that many people were going, put all that money back into the industry and, you know, we can make more movies which is yeah. fantastic. But but I mean, so. it, it was everywhere as well, wasn't it? I, I remember hearing about it on the radio. I don't remember the last time I was in work and I heard them talking about a film that's out at the cinema on the radio. Mm. Um, mm. I try not to listen to the radio, but I don't have a choice a lot of the time. It's just there. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't like the radio. But yeah, like I said, the whole hype about it. I remember back in the early 2000s when, when I worked in a computer game shop, we had the radio on all the time. And they, every, every weekend they were talking about films that are coming out at the cinema. And and I think, yeah, maybe the marketing budget has just got lower for a lot of people. And, and they didn't even realize that, you know, that, that it, they could make more money if they market it better. And I, I think yeah, there's a lot of people, I don't know, I've, I've not really thought about this. This is coming straight out of the top of my head. I could be right. I, I, I could be, I, I might not be. Um, I might be talking absolute bollocks, but I kind of feel like, the the way advertising has gone and you know everyone's saying right you need to know everything about the customers everything on the internet is just taking details from us so they can sell us stuff mm-hmm. and it's like mm-hmm. i i kind of feel like maybe they've taken over too much and they're telling people <laughs> what advertising they need to do when they they probably got it wrong they're just getting all the money in for, them, for themselves instead of these big companies going to radio stations going to other people I feel like mm. they're just being manipulated by the like the digital online world of yeah. advertising, maybe. A lot like we talk about the band thing. All of these um, you know, marketing schemes, they're playing the game. Yeah. <laughs> they have to. Yeah. Otherwise people won't go and see the films. There's been plenty of um well, I mean, let's quickly talk about the Flash. So this is a movie mm. that had millions upon millions of films of marketing put into it, and they didn't make that money back. Okay. So it just shows you that, you know, I think that film was marketed well. It was beefed up well. The trailers were fantastically done. Everything about the film looked great, but they didn't make that money back. And these failures are the ones that are prompting people to put less and less money into marketing these films. Right. Because okay. they, it could do a Barbie or an Oppenheimer, or it could do a Flash where it loses the money rather than makes it back. Yeah. So I just don't think the studios want to gamble that much. And that's probably one of the reasons why you're seeing a lot of remakes, you're seeing a lot of comic book movies and stuff like that, because it's much easier to market something that somebody already knows yeah. rather than something that someone has created and started from scratch. So that's why everyone's complaining about all oh, these Marvel movies, all these remakes, all these you know, like Barbie, all these like old toys that are like being put into movies and stuff. It's because it's easily marketable things that you already know. Yeah. All they're doing is showing you something that you already know what it is, which is much easier to market to someone than something that someone has absolutely no idea about. So 
that would be one of the reasons, obviously, why they're making so much money. But anyway, The Flash, it's been slated by almost everyone. Um, yes, it's got some very bad CGI in it, which feels really rushed. And obviously all the Ezri Miller stuff about him just being a general crazy person came out around this. I feel like the whole movie was just sabotaged to fail. I feel like DC, because DC hasn't done very well up to this point and they've sabotaged it now and they're doing a hard reset with James Gunn just resetting (laughs) everything again from the start. I feel like this film was sabotaged literally before it even came out. Although I will say I thought the film was great fun complete schlock complete madness but i loved every second of it i don't care what anyone says i I loved it i thought it was fantastic i thought it was really fun storyline i thought seeing michael keaton return as batman was brilliant um i thought you know doing the twist on superman i won't spoil it for people but it's something else when you just assumed it would be that um i thought it was great i thought the storyline was solid i thought the whole thing of him going back in time was great um, I loved it. I, I honestly, I, I you know, yes, the CGI in parts it looked flat. It's a perfect example of can we just do more practical effects and not have every single scene that's got fighting in it be CGI? And I think that this film will make other filmmakers not use as much CGI in parts of movies. Okay, so it's a it will be a good tipping point because the last few Marvel movies have not been like, we'll talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp quickly as well. Just throw that in with this again. I thought it was good. People slated it because it was just a giant CGI mess. I understand that. Although the CGI quality in this was far superior to the flash because Marvel CGI seems to be mostly of a good standard. Um, but again, yeah, not the best film in the world, but I still enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I like the Ant-Man character, uh, but again, that got slated. I think that all of these really high CGI you know, Marvel have someone sitting in a chair having a conversation with person with a person. They could shoot that in a room. Yeah. Put all of the background of just a normal room is CGI. It's like we're going way too overboard with the CGI. Just design a set, find a room, and just <laughs> shoot in the room. Yeah. Like there's no need for this level of constant every single thing in the background has to be cgi which is why you appreciate films like oppenheimer and barbie had some fantastic sets brilliant practical sets and you really can tell the difference when you're watching a film between that what the best people will do you can mix it you use cgi and you use practical and you put those two together to gel them to make a really good looking film and that's why i appreciate films like oppenheimer and barbie like i said looked fantastic but yeah flash was great uh, and Man of the Wasp was good as well, but it's just that tipping point of just way too much CGI, just loads of shit going on on the screen that you can't understand or your brain can't see. You've got that uncanny valley thing with weird CGI versions of characters that are still moving weird. I mean, people keep on showing screenshots of, you know, practical effects from Lord of the Rings that came out like 20 years ago look absolutely incredible to this day and a movie that came out this year looks like absolute hmm. dog shit yeah so it just shows you that you know i think we are getting to the you know marvel movies in the last 10 years have pushed that up not their own fault but everyone's tried to copy and be like them and you know do that and it's just got to a point now where it's getting out of hand we need to stop it and that's what i said to you the mid-range mid-budget movies will come back yeah because studios cannot afford to keep losing hundreds of millions of pounds on these movies <laughs> it just can't go on forever with less and less um money coming into the industry you can't keep pumping out these giant blockbuster movies and losing 200 million dollars on every single one because it's just gonna implode yeah and you know we'll have like a movie recession so yeah, but yeah. I, I saw I saw a graph actually uh, a few weeks back, probably not long after the whole Barbenheimer thing, of like how many films. Well, I didn't have every film, but like films in general, the bigger films that have come out this year, and the losses or gains that they've made. And I think Spider Man made money. That was one of the last ones that actually made a lot of money. Most of them were yeah. in the red underneath the graph, and then obviously mm-hmm. Oppenheimer and Barbie. Um, at the end, they sort of made up for all the other losses in in Hollywood, but yeah, it's it's again, it's also ridiculous. Like some of the other films that came out were probably absolutely amazing. If they they probably would have done much better 
if if I, I don't know I actually I do not know <laughs> I don't I don't know that I haven't again like I haven't researched this but yeah I I, I feel like it's a marketing and, and getting the hype like I said it's it's the hype getting the people behind the hype and talking to other people about it like we always say at the end word of word of mouth is the the best best way to advertise and and everyone was talking about Bob and Hyper Bob and Heimer. yeah um you don't hear people talking about the spider-man well they were at the time but yeah you don't really hear people talking about other films that are coming out of the cinema or what they're going to watch but yeah it was on everything everywhere all at once yeah. that was a good film um but uh yeah it was everywhere yeah it was everywhere i'll just quickly throw in i finally bought on blu-ray Zack Snyder's four hour, nearly four hour <laughs> cut of the Justice League. Yeah. And it was really, really good. An absolute million miles away from the first version of it. Yeah. I've never. It, I really, I seen. really, really enjoyed the, the Zack Snyder Justice League. I thought it was awesome. So much better, so much more in depth, so much more character development. Shots were longer. You know, there were bits and bobs where it was like, you know, that's 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 not too great. But overall, really, really loved it. A world apart from the first um, Justice League. So if you do have a spare almost four hours to watch um, <laughs> Zack Snyder's Justice League, I bought it on Blu-ray and it was worth every single penny that I paid for it. Looked crisp, brilliant, loved it. Nice. Yeah, I, I think I remember hearing about that a lot when it first came out as well. Um, yeah. And how, how good it was. I I I never watched the Justice League. We have we're we're so behind on films. Uh, like I said, we we haven't watched that many. We 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 go for TV shows over them over films really. Uh, but like well, yeah, I've not, we haven't seen the Joker. We haven't seen hardly any of the DC mm, films that have come out recently. That's a killer film. The new Batman as well is really really good. Yeah, yeah, two films that you definitely need to watch. I was just going to say with that Zack Snyder Justice League cut, this just shows you the power of people. People hated the Justice League did. so much yeah. and complained about it and wanted to see Zack Snyder's original <laughs> vision so much that an entire studio gave him back the movie <laughs> and the rights to cut that movie together, change the CGI and put it out how it was originally intended. And it's so much better that just shows you that sometimes when these companies get over involved and destroy someone's original vision of a film they really can turn something that could have been fantastic into something that is really really bad <laughs> yeah so yeah it's that's a win this is a huge win for the fans just definitely we finally got his version of what we wanted originally but just five years later which is is that how long it took? I thought it was only about a year, year and a half. No, it was 20... What was it? Seven... When did the original one come out? I think it was 2017, wasn't it? And the other one was... So, so yeah, the original Justice League was 2017 and Jack, Zack Snyder's Justice League was 2021. Bloody hell. So it was quite a while between them, yeah. Yeah. But definitely worth the wait. Yeah, love it. If you haven't seen it and you're intrigued by it, I, I'd say if you're, if you're a DC fan, go and watch it. It's really good. Yeah. It's gritty, it's much grittier and better. Character development's great, scores great, shots are brilliant. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah, nice. But it is, but it is nearly four hours long. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, well, we, we were always planning on watching all of them, like the the Aquaman. We never uh, never watched that. Um, yeah, n- that none good. of the uh, none of the um, DC films really. We're not DC. even up to date on Marvel anymore. Haven't watched. Uh, oh really? Guardians of the Galaxy three. We stopped watching. That's good. During Ms. Marvel. Um, oh yeah, yeah, it was terrible. Well, well, it wasn't. I probably wasn't terrible. We just got bored of it during the first episode, and we never went back to it. Oh really? So yeah, I mean, we we there was another film we watched. We just ignored. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I wasn't going to talk about any Marvel stuff. Should I talk about some films? Yeah, go for it, yeah. bud. So to start with, it, yeah, we, there's not many films we watch. So like you, we we used to go to the cinema every week. Before before we had kids, was it every week? Probably no, probably every two weeks. Um, and it was really good, absolutely amazing. We saw some awesome films. One that sticks out was um, well, it follows was amazing, but that was actually mm. we didn't know we were going to see that. Apparently, I couldn't remember it was a while ago, but Kelly reminded me, like it was a screen unseen. It was called, and you pay less for the ticket, 
but you don't know what film you're watching and it was it follows it was oh, that's made. awesome yeah yeah that's wicked i like that yeah um there's another one that will, will always stick with me it's not going to be a very big film i don't think many people would, would have heard of it but um it was just called how i live now um and it had saoirse ronin in it um i think that's how you say her name but it was just sort of a dystopian future i think something it killed the air off or zap zombies or something but it wasn't really an action action or you know it was kind of like a drama film not the kind of film that nice. i would have watched but i went to see it because of kelly and i was like this is cool and and it was like not many people would have seen it and and it's nice to have that memory of a film nice that you know it's going to be quite obscure and i you know i'm sure we'll yeah. go back and try and try and find it and watch it at some yeah, point watch it awesome That's yeah cool. that was a long time ago but yeah just just my, just chipping in. You know, we we used to watch a lot of films, but not so much anymore. But I got a bit of a funny story with films. With so, <laughs> I was um, we we were trying to trying to decide on a film, and we narrowed it down to a couple, and I and, and we we narrowed it down to um, Drive and Lighthouse, mm. and uh, both excellent movies, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> I wasn't in the mood for like a long, drawn out film and i said i said to kelly like lighthouse is about two people going insane they're on their own on an island it's probably going to be quite boring it's going to have just sort of shots of them just looking off into the distance <laughs> it has a bit of that yeah it's definitely not boring though it's but, fucking weird well the thing is it's not boring but drive yeah. was exactly what i said that i didn't want yep. to watch because he's the, the guy in the main guy and that's a bit weird isn't he and he's yeah there's someone to talk to him and he'll just stare at them for about five seconds and then he'll say something and i was like how has this happened like i said exactly what i didn't want to watch in a film and we go and manage yeah. to pick a film that has everything i said i didn't want to watch in. yeah <laughs> um so like out during that kelly was like we're watching lighthouse next just to see, I bet it's like action all the way through. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it, uh, the lighthouse is weird. Yeah, one of those that you said earlier, like you got to work out the ending. You, you choose your own ending. Uh, yes. I didn't really even know what was going on towards the end, to be honest. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it was enjoyable. Oh no, but the thing is, actually, I, did, I put this in the Discord. The thing is, after the film, we both looked at each other and went. That was a good film. We just don't know mm -hmm. why. It, you you can tell when something like it, it was brilliant. I I think I even said yeah that was a brilliant film. It is. It and and Kelly said it's the kind of film that people would study in like university or something and, and 100%. Go, go through and pick bits of it and go yeah why is this scene such a good scene when it doesn't look it on the outside or mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so we could tell that it was good, but we didn't understand it really why why it was a good film or what was going on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a weird film. I, I I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I thought the performances from those two was were unbelievable. Direction was fantastic. I loved the squashed um, four three perspective. Um, I thought that that make it, when they do that, it makes the film feel more claustrophobic. Yeah, when you don't have that wide panned screen um yeah i loved every second of that film i thought it was absolutely unbelievable yeah it was good um but yeah we, drive's good as well drive drive's a great film yeah um like i said it was a bit weird he i i i okay i was about to say i didn't understand it but i did i was i'm stuck on the lighthouse um <laughs> with them um but like i said it just it was the guy was a bit weird wasn't he uh but i you know yeah uh, but he ends up just like going around killing lots of people. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's oh. it's a great, it's a fantastic, really, again, really well directed, really well written film. I think Ryan Gosling in that is absolutely brilliant. I think he's, he's so st stoic yet strange in that film, his character. But I just thought it had a really good. The soundtrack to that film as well is unbelievable. Really, sort of like neon noir, weird retro. 80s synth wavy soundtrack i thought it was fantastic nice when was the last time you saw that film um i bought it on blu-ray a couple of weeks ago but i haven't seen it probably for about five years i Fucking reckon hell man just to remember that much about it when you remember more <laughs> about it from five years ago five years ago than i do it was probably what two months ago um but i, I did i didn't watch it and analyze it as much as you probably do 
I'm looking forward to watching it again, actually. I haven't, like I said, I haven't seen it in a while. So some bits of are stuck in my memory from it but they obviously need some gaps to be filled in so yeah i'm looking forward to um yeah. to watching it it's really good I mean, it'll be blue, hopefully on blu-ray as well it'll look like really really nice and crisp yeah that's awesome though man yeah i <laughs> can't believe your memory like just picking <laughs> bits out that i didn't even pick out at all and remembering them five years later so i can say it's like it, that's it's an old film it's like 2014 nerd, right? i think it was something like that yeah and yeah, it was yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we decided to go back and like try and watch some older films because uh, th- th- I mean there was loads. Of, I think I think I said a few weeks back or a few episodes back. Like I remember seeing a trailer for Rush at the cinema, and it looked amazing yeah. at the time. But we never watched it, and that was like twenty thirteen. Um, but yeah, like some films just pass you by. Like yeah. there's still films now. I'm going back to. I'm like, oh man, I missed that. I need to. I need to. You know, get it and watch it. So. I think, you know, we can't watch all the films. Um, so I'm with you on that. Looking back and stuff going, God, God damn, that came out. I need to watch it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else have we watched? Renfield. That was very good. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. Um, so I think that came out a week or two, maybe three or four or five. I could keep going. I don't remember. Not long after we spoke about Idle Hands. And I remember saying at the time, Idle Hands is like a movie on its own. There isn't very much like it at all. And then... Weird horror comedy. Very odd. And then we watched Renfield, and I was like, this is exactly the same. It's fucking that thing again. Like, (laughs) I've said... Yeah, like a (laughs) horror comedy. Yeah. I've said there's nothing like it. I haven't seen it. I haven't haven't seen it, but I'm, I'm looking forward to watching that. Yeah. So um, um talking of talking of Nick Cage, yeah. I watched um The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Okay. Never heard of that. Have you you haven't heard of that? Nope. Um Nick Nicholas Cage plays himself. Okay. In the film. <laughs> and uh he goes to this guy's island to um as like a guest for his party and he this guy is like a drug dealer. It's um it's Pedro Pascal as well, so he's obviously fantastic. And uh all sorts of things into you, but he's playing Nicolas Cage. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you're a Nick Cage fan, afterwards, me and Vicky were like, that was absolutely fantastic. L- loved it. So sorry, you just reminded so, me that we watched that as well. And so I thought you said Nick brilliant. Cage is playing himself, but Pedro... Yeah, he is Nick Cage. But... Pedro Pascal is a character, but Nicolas Cage is Nicolas Cage in it. Okay. So the, all the real world stuff that Nicolas Cage is Nicolas Cage, he's playing himself and he... He he needs to make some money, so he goes to this guy's party, ends up making friends with him, um, and he's like a big drug lord and loads of fucking <laughs> crazy shit ensues. It's fantastic, but he is playing Nick Cage, which makes it even better. Awesome, but yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one to watch yeah. if you get the chance. And it's it's only like hour forty five. It's not a long film, okay, but it's um it's really 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 good. I I, I wanted to go see it in the cinema, but we didn't get a chance. But then they put it on Netflix, and we were like, yes. I'll give this a watch. Nice. Um, Sorry, just reminded yeah, me. But yeah, yeah Renfield, no, I definitely, Renfield. I definitely want to see Renfield. Yeah, it definitely. is a horror. Well, it's a comedy film with lots of very gory bits in it. So it's kind of, it's nice. kind of a horror com- comedy. But yeah, um, this guy, I don't know the actor name or the character name. You'd probably remember his favorite color, his shoe size, his belt size. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, he's basically Nicolas Cage's familiar, like you were saying with the, mm-hmm. with the one earlier, like, Nicholas Cage is Dracula, and this guy's with him for hundreds or thousands of years. And then it starts off, and he's at like this meeting, um, but he's actually finding victims. So he's going to like the bad guys and getting victims so Dracula can drink their blood, stay healthy, and all that. Um, but he realizes that he can get out. He he should get out. He's a, like he is being bogged down or held down by Dracula, so he wants to sort of escape and not be his little bitch anymore but it's so nice. funny it's really funny comedy as well yep. yeah horror it looks horror. good i'm definitely gonna watch i def- definitely gonna watch it because it looked like it was gonna be really good and anything with nick cage playing a crazy character like that is definitely worth watching i bet yeah awesome um but that was um i think that was about all the films i wanted to talk about i don't well, i haven't got anything else written down here have i oh oh uh, one other film we watched re- fairly recently john wick 4 now, nice. I, oh, it was ridiculous and over the top. Yeah, I, of course. I think it's a, it's we must have skipped film. some John Wick films because, like, when he started talking about like the table being after him, and we, neither of us had any idea what the table was 
And I remember the first film being like fairly good and just action, but this one was action on steroids. Like he, it was just it was just action all the way through, and like over the top, ridiculous. And I was like, how did it get to here from from there? Like <laughs> they, they've got these suits that are arm like that stop bullets. So so when they're running yeah. around, they put their just arm over their face and so they can get shot in the face. And I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so, yeah, we we, we missed yeah. something. Either we can't remember John Wick 3 or we've missed something. Um, yeah. But I think it was a bit over the top. I didn't enjoy it that much. It was just too much. Okay. Yeah, too too much action constantly. Yeah. Too much over the top action. Like Yeah. Some people love that, though. Yeah. They just want action all the way through. And that's what feeds into a lot of people. Like I said, if there's not loads of shit going on on the screen, if it's just people talking, a lot of people just don't like that. They just want constant. You got to think about the attention spans have gone way down. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, with social media and everything that we consume so quickly, we want it now, 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 now. Which is why movies like John Wick Four have their place. Yeah, because <laughs> people fucking love them. So yeah, I haven't seen it, but okay, I'll get round to it eventually. I'm sure. Um, the last thing I want to talk about quickly, not a new film. Uh, week before last, I managed to get a ticket for the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we watched that in the cinema. I never saw the original Jurassic Park in the cinema. I saw The Lost World, um, the second and third one, but I was just a little bit too young to go and watch the first Jurassic Park. I had it on VHS, but I never watched it in the cinema. So it was an absolute treat to watch Jurassic Park finally on the big screen with big surround system and everything it was amazing it was it was it was great we we enjoyed obviously you know we know the movie very well but it was really cool to see it on the big screen and witness it and yeah really really cool so i feel like we got treated seeing the um 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park yeah but nice that's yeah that's it that's the last last movie i've seen and now i'm just looking forward to two films i'm looking forward to this year are the creator um which you, you should definitely check that if you're a sci-fi fan um yeah, so basically AI has sort of taken over the world. So the world's like a futuristic um, post-apocalyptic world where we've got robots that run through AI, but we work with them. You know, they're in our armies, our schools, everything. And uh, there is this one robot that has the powerful AI that can hack into anything, basically, and, you know, turn all the robots against. So the main character, this is how I understand it. I'm seeing it. The main character is sent to kill that yeah but then realizes it's a child robot Re- reverse terminator yeah basically <laughs> and uh it looks absolutely gorgeous and fantastic so i'm going to see that and obviously june 2 yeah later this year as well so they're the two films that i'm really really hyped up to see but i always just check out what's coming out so i'll probably go to the cinema quite a lot towards the end of the year when there's not much to do in the winter yeah but apart from those two that i'm really looking forward to i'll just see what else comes out and go and watch it awesome well um we should wrap up a bit there we, we yeah we said we're going to talk about board games we already said don't really have time we'll do a don't... whole episode about that yeah it's a good job we didn't tack this on to the last episode because it would have ended up being a four-hour episode <laughs> um thank you all for listening yeah um we're not going to piss about this time and do an extra 20 minutes of talking after saying we've got to go no pissing about i'm sorry alexander i'm sorry Stu. <laughs> <laughs> But it's late. Tell your friends about us. Tell your enemies about us. Tell your manager about us. Your managers want to know about us, I reckon. Your boss. <laughs> go, go to their office. Give them a knock. Yeah, hello. hello. It's only me. Uh, come listen to the, down- the download. Um, Simon, do you want to talk about your YouTube for a little bit? Uh, yeah, just quickly. Um, yeah, like I said, I got that gaming video playing Kiss. Um, Psycho Psycho Tonight, my child. So go and check that out um, and see what I'm like playing games. Uh, everything else is going great so like i said before if you haven't subscribed come over and subscribe um also again like i said i've had really great feedback on my first single released as mercury night on spotify nine live so if you haven't heard that go and check that out i will be releasing a- another one at the beginning of october thank you very much awesome um and I, as we always say we love all of you already already in the discord as i said a lot of my tv show recommendations came from there which was amazing so, yeah, we want more of you in the Discord. We've got to say thank you to all the legendary Patreons that we have, who are Ben Sacon, Henry Richardson, Christopher Hambridge, George Butler, Dean Delicado, Dan Jacobs-Cross, Alexander Toon, and James Harrison. 
all of you guys absolute legends thank you very much for supporting us in the way you are um if anybody else wants to help support us you can do you can find everything we've said so far and a link to the patreon in the episode notes um we've got a couple of tiers at the moment both support tiers we've got stuff coming at some point in the future I can't say. I can't. I, I don't want to get your hopes up again <laughs> um, by trying to don't trying worry, to give a date yeah. or anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's going to be it for that. This uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. so it's a goodbye from Simon. Goodbye. And a goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>